tamtej chwili. Czy widzimy, że jest ciecz, tylko że ta ciecz przestała wrzeć? Coś się dzieje przy tej rurce. Właśnie, przy tej rurce, która tutaj wystaje z, tego, z tej szklanej bańki. Może spróbujmy jeszcze zbliżyć bardziej y, naszą lampę do, tej, do tejże rurki. Minus. 271 mniej więcej stopniach Celsjusza następuje przejście do fazy nadciekłej. Ta faza nadciekła ma bardzo interesujące własności. Po pierwsze, Halo? Miał. Raz, dwa, trzy. Raz, dwa, trzy. Raz, dwa, trzy, cztery, pięć, sześć, siedem, osiem, dziewięć, dziesięć.
Dzień dobry Państwu. Good morning, Witam ladies and gentlemen. na dniu dydaktycznym Welcome. nadzwyczajnego This zjazdu fizyków polskich zorganizowanego przez Polskie Towarzystwo Fizyczne w stulecie istnienia uh, towarzystwa. Jak myślimy o anniversary of the Polish Physical Society, um, we celebrate the centenary and there is this kind of danger that There might be uh, lots of uh, oldish anecdotes, yellowish photographs will be nostalgic and outdated. However, this year's organizers have envisaged the agenda that is pretty well rooted in the past. It encompasses a hundred of years of the Polish Physical Society's being in business in Poland and physicists supervised and taken care of by the society. And it is a trigger to reflect upon what has changed over a hundred years. What are today's challenges every teacher or popular scientist faces. We are brought together in empty room, transmission line, which is pretty weird. This is because of the coronavirus pandemics. It has tripped us from well-trodden ways of thinking and acting. It triggered to think anew, starting 12th of March, what it means to teach. Who's a good teacher? What can we put aside? as relics of the past that we got used to over the years of our career and what on the other hand is so important it needs protection whilst trying to meet the students, the pupils' needs in addition to the needs of physics aficionados when we Uh, disseminate popular science of universities. The morning session agenda addresses the things that I referred to. And the first to present is Professor Wojciech Nawrocik. Professor Nawrocik is a senior professor at Adam Mitkiewicz University in Poznań. He has uh, held many organizational positions. The dean uh, of the uh, faculty, the head of the chair, and he was into dissemination of physics, being an indefatigable in this. The Therefore, Professor Navrocik has acquired the perspective and unique position to tell us about 100 years of physics teachers training in Poland and what are today's challenges related to teachers training. The floor is yours. Dzień dobry Państwu, Szanowni Państwo, bardzo żałuję, że z powodu pandemii oraz ze względu na wiek i tkwiące we mnie przewlekłe choroby musiałem podjąć decyzję o pozostaniu w Poznaniu i drogą elektroniczną wystąpienia przed Państwem. Słuchając mojego wystąpienia proszę pamiętać, że nie jestem historykiem i wykład ma charakter eseju historycznego, a nie pracy naukowej. Dlatego w nim tyle cytatów zaczerpniętych z publikacji osób bardzo dobrze zorientowanych w problemie kształcenia nauczycieli, w szczególności nauczycieli fizyki. Temat mojego wykładu to jest 100 lat kształcenia nauczycieli fizyki w Polsce. Nazywam się Wojciech Nawrocik, jestem z Uniwersytetu im. Adama Mickiewicza w Poznaniu. Zawód nauczycielski należy do najstarszych zawodów na świecie. Powiedział to pan Piotr Mazur w swojej pracy, zawód nauczyciela w ciągu dziejów. Gdyż nauczanie i wychowanie towarzyszy człowiekowi już od czasów pierwotnych. Jak się okazuje, pierwszy w dziejach świata nauczyciel rozpoczął swoją pracę około 2200 lat przed naszą erą. Miejsce i rola, jaką ma pełnić nauczyciel w społeczeństwie, była i jest wypadkowo określonych potrzeb społecznych i interesów społecznych. Jak wyglądała edukacja drugiej Rzeczypospolitej? Ujednolicenie i upowszechnienie edukacji było jednym z największych wyzwań stojących przed II Rzeczypospolitą. Wykształcenie było bowiem nie tylko wymogiem cywilizacyjnym, ale także istotnym elementem budowania tożsamości narodowej. Idea powszechnego nauczania pojawiła się już It was 18th century that marked the idea of a general public uh, education when culture, 
history, language shaped the nation as a whole. There was this conviction that end-to-end uh, -end education was required to form a modern society. Second Republic of Poland training. 1918-1939, what was very important for the reconstruction of uh, the teaching system in the education system uh, were the two decrees on the 7th of uh, February 1919. There was the decree of Józef Piłsudski, the head of the state, on uh, school obligation and the decree on general school teachers' training, unification of trainings, and the obligation to introduce it became the part of the constitution of the 17th March, March uh, 21. Article 118 informed that the general school was obligatory for all the citizens. 119 informed state school training, self-government school, is free of charge. Still, the state uh, provides not well off but gifted students, the grants for mid and um, tertiary education. What was the system in the Second Republic of Poland? Seven years school obligation, seven year general educational schools, and the system was as follows. Eight years in lower pre-high school, five years higher pre-high school. After the fourth grade, the pupil might have continued in the lower pre-high school on condition that they passed the examination. There were three types, humanities with Latin,
Dzień dobry Państwu. Witam na Dniu Dydaktycznym Nadzwyczajnego Zjazdu Fizyków Polskich zorganizowanego przez Polskie Towarzystwo Fizyczne w stulecie jego istnienia. Dzisiaj jest dzień szczególny i specjalny, dlatego że w odróżnieniu od innych zjazdów fizyków polskich ta uroczystość odbywa się stuprocentowo online. Has been held online 100%. The coronavirus pandemic makes us think what is important in teaching and learning, what is a relic of the past that we can get rid of. Today's lectures and other accompanying and fringe events, which are a part of the didactic dates, are going to show how to make it modern, facilitate and shirk of things that have entangled us until now. As it is the case of days of remembrance, it's been a hundred years of Polish physical society that may result in recollections and memories. The organizers have prepared a program that is deeply rooted in the past. On the other hand, it means meets the challenges every physics teacher faces, be it the school higher education institution or popular science disseminators. Having overcome technical problems, we do apologize for inconveniences, uh, we start with Professor Wojciech Nawrocik's uh, lecture. He's been an organizer holding different functions, the director of the institute, the dean of the department, and he's been into dissemination of uh, physics knowledge. He's the right person to tell us how teachers' education has evolved over a hundred years, what are the challenges and problems that teaching and learning face. I do regret that because of the pandemics and chronic diseases made me resolve to stay in Poznan and deliver this kind of digital presentation. Having listened to my presentation, you should know that I'm not a historian. It's more of a column rather than a scientific work. Therefore, so many quotes from publications of the people who are into teacher training problems, especially physics teachers. Kształcenia nauczycieli fizyki w Polsce. Nazywam się Wojciech Nawrocik, jestem w Uniwersytecie imienia Adama Mickiewicza. Zawód nauczycielski należy do najstarszych zawodów na świecie. The oldest professions in the world. Piotr Mazur says this in his paper. Teachers job for thousands of years. Because ever since the primeval times, teachers have been with us. The world's famous teacher started just about 2,000 years before Christ. The role and the place of the teacher in the society, in the general public, has been the resultant of specific social needs and social interests. What was the education in the Second Republic of Poland? Unification of Education was one of the challenges for Poland. Not only was it a civilizational requirement, but also a very important element to develop the identity. It was the 18th century when the idea uh, arose. Culture, language, history were the uniting factors, so there are more and more people who are quite willing to know that, uh, to, to be convinced that today's education was the prerequisite to develop modern society. Second Republic of Poland training, 1918-1939. What was very important for rejuvenation of the Polish schooling system was the set of decrees released before the parliament was established. 1919, it was uh, the head of the country decree Józef Piłsudski on school obligation and teachers training for general education system schools. Unification of education system and introduction of school duty became 
and the part of the Constitution, 17th of March, 1929. Article 118 informed that the general school is obligatory for all citizens of the country. 119 indicated that state and self-government schools is available free of charge, but the state provides exceptionally gifted students the uh, grants uh, to attend um, secondary and tertiary edu education. What was the system like in the Second Republic of Poland? Seven-year duty, obligation, seven-year general schools, and secondary schools as follows. Eight years gymnasium, two, three years pre-high school, five years high school. Post the fourth class, they could continue in a lower pre-high school on condition that they have passed the examination. There were three times into humanities with Latin, maths and natural sciences with Greek and Latin, and higher one that finished with a school leaving examination, which was an entry examination to university. The decree indicated obligatory learning for children aged 7 to 14, and it was not applicable immediately. The complex situation in education system in different parts of Poland, insufficient number of teachers and building and equipment, the seven-year general school was treated as a kind of developing school. The general school, according to the decree, covered seven years of uh, teaching and training. Initially, there were 92% of single-class schools of elementary level. There was just one class, 6% composed of two classes and only two schools that were composed of seven different classes. The school of liberation uh, was observed by 47% uh, of uh, children. Despite the fact there was not enough uh, school uh, facilities, the number of children increased from 66% in 1921-22 to 96% in 1928-29. The basic education level very much depended on the number of uh, the classes at the school. Half of the people of Poland were unable to read and write. The uh, level of illiteracy was pretty high in the eastern part of Poland and in rural areas rather than in the cities. Uh, secondary school education, the national secondary school education, uh, was provided against the fee. In 1932, there was the educational system reform. The basic uh, training in a primary school continued for seven years, but whenever a student wanted to carry on learning, they m might have taken the examination to the pre-high school after the sixth grade. The secondary school was distributed into the four-year pre-high school and two-year high school, which had the school leaving examination. And uh, vocational training was included. Uh, the um, vocational high schools were created. Secondary and tertiary education graduates, there was only 4.2% of the uh, people, 12.6% of the people in the cities. A bit more than a half percent boasted the university diplomas in Krakow, Lwów, and similar big cities. 6.6 .6 in the cities, 5.2 respectively. So these cities were ahead of Warsaw and uh, Poznan, 3.2 and 2.7 percent respectively. Those were the basic terms of the primary school to develop uh, physics physical education, intellectual capacities, and the preparation of higher education institution was not the objective that was included in the school method and, uh, methods and curriculum. So what was the teacher's training um, at that time? The central person in the society development was a teacher, and the preparation of the teacher to exercise their professional duties was the main objective. During deportation time, the role of the teacher was pretty well indicated and the teacher's preparation was also indicated. In Poland, it was also indicated that traditions, national traditions should be cultivated, the spirit of uh, Polishness and preparation for uh, regaining independence. The teacher's training problem was very important in 1918, 1939. 
in the state's policy. The teachers training uh, units, higher education and academia that uh, uh, was involved in teachers training had high theoretical and practical knowledge uh, staff. Polish elites, Polish educational elites agreed that when independence is regained, it will be necessary to create the original joint Polish educational system. This awareness was especially um, attached to the teachers' training system. Once the independence was regained, there are teachers' seminars created upon the decree on the teachers' training for the general school system in the Republic of Poland. And the program included the departure from the traditional training uh, um, elements. The needs, there needs to be uh, minimiz minimizing the amount of the curriculum, but yet the selection of the training methods to develop uh, pupils. The whole training system should be targeted at uh, making future teachers capable to expand uh, the knowledge by lifelong learning self-education. Compared to general school, the teachers training high schools included, included arts and technology subjects as well as pedag pedagogical classes that was strictly connected with uh, the general school training program uh, with respect to the future job of a teacher. 11th March 32 Act closed the teachers' seminars. In 1937, the high schools for teachers were open. They accepted those who graduated from success of the primary school and uh, uh, four classes of pre-high school that ended with the so-called little school event exam. They were people of 17 they were based on the general training system at the age of 14. It was a great advancement at that time. Learning at the general uh, high school continued for two years and three years in pedagogical ones. So pedagogical ones were better than the teacher's training seminars. Not only did they give the better preparation in general terms for those who wanted to become the teachers, but also made it possible for the school leavers to start learning at higher education institutions, which is a very important element. It was a great advancement uh, for teachers' training uh, institutions and the curriculum also took into consideration the best uh, experiences derived from seminars. Based on these experiences, new topic subjects and work forms were introduced. However, the outbreak of the World War put a halt to the possibility of uh, checking the new uh, school types. There is a separate chapter in the mid-war period, namely the institutions designed to increase teachers' qualifications, state institutions and association-related institutions. There was the most popular and the mass one, the upper advanced training uh, course for teachers. The statutes and uh, curricula of these advanced trainings were published in 1923. And they started uh, the useful activity that continued until 1939. Teachers of physics in the Second Republic of Poland took part in numerous assemblies of uh, physicists, first of which in 1923. It was Wacław Werner who uh, delivered a speech on the physics uh, teachers' training. He was the first one. Uh, however, the first General Assembly was supporting uh, the present, pres delivering the presentations on pedagogical issue and general issues. Starting 1926, there was a division into two sections, the general and scientific section that was the presentation platform for the latest research and didactic session, or the one for the teachers. The number of papers ranges between uh, a dozen to a few dozens. 
fourth assembly. There was a detailed program of physics training changes for humanities, maths, and natural sciences pre-high schools, and also filed with the Ministry of Public Enlightenment and Religious to make it possible for the teachers to air out their opinions on the new curricula and try and test them before such curricula are introduced into life. On numerous occasions, they requested to increase the number of uh, training, uh, physics training and to reform the school leaving exam on the topic, on this subject. And there were the resolutions with regards to these were presented by the main board and delivered to the Ministry of Religions and Public Enlightenment and Education. The didactic section focused mainly on the following topics, physics training, didactics at the secondary school level, interpretation of particular sections of physics at school, organization of uh, workshops and classes. They made resolutions to subsidize schools to have physical workshops and to exempt teachers from physics from other duties and to decrease the number of teaching hours down to 18 a week. Stanisław Warthoffman, in his Physics in a Secondary School article in 1928, writes, and I'm quoting, as it was in print. Teaching physics in a secondary school is not only far from being uh, perfect, it is uh, far from being average. There is just a few exceptions of school, but the vast majority of schools, uh, this is a dramatic level of uh, physics training. Physics is discarded in a um, training. Why does it happen? One of the most flamboyant and uh, living uh, domains of science is just a set of formulas that is devoid of harmony and life. One of the most important reasons is insufficient preparation of the teachers. When preparation for teaching is really difficult, a teacher of physics is especially difficult uh, as far as it goes to its position because they need to learn inside out. Um, it is enough to have to have the university uh, course. In-depth orientation in physics requires additional and auxiliary information, namely mathematics. In addition to mathematics, a physicist needs to know something about astronomy, chemistry, crystallography, and so on and so forth. So the course covering is insufficient to be the master of the topic. And on top of that, a theoretical preparation needs to be in line with experimental preparation. A teacher needs to be able to have this specific experimental capability. And on top of that, we need to learn how to teach. And on top of that, we need pedagogical preparation. Every class requires a number of uh, hours of preparation, uh, thorough studies. A um, teacher of physics needs to remember that physics, like any other branch of science, is a subject of constant development. It forces the teacher to study specific uh, periodicals. However, the majority of teachers step into their jobs without any didactic preparation. The studies are not sufficient qualification for doing this job. Anybody who was studying mathematics or feels they are also authorized to teach physics, but the author denies such a concept because there is a real difference between the pure mathematics and specific system of physics which needs to take into consideration the real progress, the real course of phenomena in reality. Teaching the curriculum divides the content into random areas which are not interlinked. It also does not include the progress of science. It is exactly the same now as it used to be many years ago. 
The author claims that books and manuals are closely related to the content. In the majority of cases, they are written for a specific purpose, and hence the, they emphasize the disadvantages. Previously, only people who were loosely related to real science were writing books. Recently, we have seen some improvement in this area because we can see Natanson Zakrzewski's and Kalinowski's books. These people ensure the relatively high level of the books. Unfortunately, they are not always available for teachers and for, for students and pupils because of their price. However, they can be particularly useful for teachers. But we also need to remember the situation in pre-high schools in cities and in towns. There is a major difference. Very often when physics is taught, uh, the system is closed and uh, students or pupils don't, don't take advantage of their lessons. Even if you have the best teacher, the best results cannot be ensured without demonstrations, without showing what it all looks like in practice. The pessimistic image is not going to change soon. Unfortunately, students approach their studies exactly the same as they did when they were in schools. It was written in 1928. They were only concerned about passing an exam and getting a diploma. This also happens in universities. More stringent requirements could be useful. Universal knowledge and the love for knowledge should be the decisive factor when getting a diploma authorizing to teach physics. It seems indispensable to carry out a reform of teaching physics. Edward Stentz wrote, as far as uh, good education of the teachers of physics is concerned, some progressive steps were made. The faculty of teaching physics was established. This will help us educate a group of teachers of physics who will know how to teach the subjects through experiments because they learned how to do it at the university. And just a short remark, the period 1919-1953 will always be related to Stefan Pienkowski's name in the history of Polish uh, teaching of physics. The great prospects we had then were the yield of his efforts. Before and after the war, his students were the heads of a number of research and educational centers taking advantage of the knowledge they acquired during their studies. The biggest center, the Institute of Physics, uh, University of Warsaw, is his own oeuvre. Coming back to the exercises mentioned by the authors, we have to remember that cooperation of the Polish Physical Society could be of great contribution to the changes. The Polish Physical Society decided to assist in the development of uh, physics curricula. Uh, the next stage would be to encourage participation of the Polish Physical Society in organizing the exercises as long as it is welcomed by associations of teachers. All these institutions will greatly contribute to the improvement of the level of teaching physics for our students. That was the year 1928. In this photo, you can see the board of the Congress of the Polish Physicists in 1932. They all played a very important role in the recovery of physics after the Second World War. Right in, in the middle, you can see Professor Moschitsky. 
There is also Professor Pienkowski. Please note that uh, that was the group of distinguished physicists. The Ministry of Religion was the Ministry of Religious Affairs and Public Education was organizing various cons, uh, various courses, summer courses, which were also chaired by Professor Pienkowski. They were devoted to spectra, to uh, quanta, including experiments in the university lab. Moreover, there were some practical exercises uh, in teaching physics. You can see the list of uh, the lecturers' names. These were really distinguished personalities. Tadeusz Łopuszański, as the educator and tutor, was uh, striving towards better school, prosperity of the state, and healthier society. He said that we are randomly looking for the right system of education, but it is like running errands. We carry out or implement structural reforms that are meaningless. After several years, we decide to step back, observing their failure and the great incapacity of the whole system. We implement the changes whose objectives uh, are not known to anybody. This is the reality uh, the, the, in, in whose light we should remember Łopuszański. Łopuszański was born in 1874, died in 1955. He was the graduate of the uh, Faculty of Physics and Mathematics, Jagiellonian University, the teacher and the Minister of Religious Affairs and Public Education. He managed to develop a coherent educational uh, system which work in practice and render the expected results. The experimental secondary school established in uh, Rydzen near Leszno was uh, the work of his life. It was established owing to the provision of uh, August Sulkowski who established uh, who, who decided to hand over the Rydzen uh, estate to the national education. In 1927, Wopuszański succeeded in reconstructing Sulkowski's, the Sulkowski's Foundation and recovering its um, financial assets. He also participated in organizing the foundation. He was appointed the headmaster of the secondary school in Redzen. This is where he, cre where he created the experimental center of modern uh, education for Polish uh, secondary education. His uh, idea, his concept was uh, based on three pillars. First of all, observing the truth, developing uh, the, the, the will to learn and also the love for creative work. Polish intelligentsia did not fulfill, uh, in his opinion, the prerequisites to implement these tasks. They were quite weak. So he knew that we have to teach young people how to face the difficult challenges. Arkadiusz Piekara was the teacher of physics in Rydzen. In the book Rydzen School, Rydzen School, he was remembered as a young teacher, the assistant of uh, Stefan Pienkowski from the University of Warsaw, decided to give up his career at the university, and much to their surprise and to the astonishment of the young professor, he decided to move to uh, Redzena in 1928. 
he had lots of opportunities to carry out independent uh, academic scientific work in an excellent laboratory and also the opportunity to practice abroad. His uh, lessons of physics involved experiments, demonstrations, and exercises. Furthermore, he also built some uh, instruments, devices from the available simple components. As the teacher, Piekara developed a speech during the Physis Physicists' Congress in Vilnius 1938 on individual uh, projects made by students in the secondary school. After many years, his students remembered their teacher of physics with great respect. Łopuszański's work, accompanied by his fellow teachers, brought some measurable results. In the period 1933-1936, uh, the school students included 12 sons of workers and peasants, 15 sons of uh, craftsmen and merchants, 27 sons of clerks and teachers, and 15 uh, sons of uh, um, entrepreneurs. So this is not true that this was only the school for elites. The analysis of the future uh, life and career of 168 graduates of the school showed that all of them decided to continue their tertiary education. 63% of uh, them managed to complete their studies within the, uh, the assumed time. 20% uh, of the graduates patented 150 uh, disco discoveries or inventions and made over 1,000 publications in 10 languages. Unfortunately, 29% uh, of them died during the Second World War fighting, and 80% of them participated in the combat. During the war, contrary to the exterminating policy, the scientific life did not disappear. Polish Teachers Association decided to continue secret learning on the level of secondary and tertiary education. Thousands of teachers were involved in this work. Secret, secret teaching covered around 1 million students of uh, universal common schools, uh, meaning primary schools, uh, but there were also secondary and, secondary and university students. Let us now move on to the period after the Second World War. The legal base for the education in Poland in 1944 was still the act on the educational system dating back to 1932. The point was to reconstruct and retrieve the operation of schools. On the 27th November 1944, the Council of Ministers issued the resolution on the organization of education in the transition period. It included seven year and seven course primary school, three years lower secondary school, and two years upper secondary school. The new system was based on the principle of unity, uh, common access. Uh, it was supposed to be free and public education. The public uh, schools, uh, primary schools became mandatory. In the period since 1948-49, there were um, comprehensive primary schools, uh, which consisted of seven classes, and in the, and the secondary schools were classes 8 to 11. 
The development of vocational and primary education as well as various courses for the working people were the priority. The teachers' uh, college which where um, future, t uh, future teachers could learn after their maturity exam existed in uh, the Polish system of education in the period 1954-1975. Since 1956, this system was operating uh, simultaneously with uh, secondary schools for teachers. As the result of various reforms, uh, such teachers' colleges were closed down and they were replaced by high schools for teachers. As far as university education is concerned, in 1951, uh, there, were, there was the system of two, uh, two types of studies, uh, two-year bachelor studies and three, uh, I'm sorry, three-year bachelor studies and two-year master studies. As of the 30th of March 1950, the graduates of uh, vocational secondary schools were forced to work. Since 1956-57, uh, uniform four- and five-year master studies uh, returned, and then uh, there was also a system of uh, studies uh, for adults. They were either extramural or um, carried out in according to various systems. Many of this university graduates advanced to become professors. In 1998, the Polish Parliament Sejm has amended uh, for the fifth time uh, the Educational Act, primary school six classes and pre-high school three classes, and they were supposed to continue in three types of uh, secondary schools, including three-year uh, high school. So the system, eight years of primary school, four years of uh, general education high school, and five years technical high school. Starting the 1st October 2016, the teacher's educational training is included in the higher education institution. This is the first level and the second level, uh, third year education, uh, unified five year education, and both graduates' uh, uh, system. Higher education teachers account for 98% of the teachers who are employed in the educational system in total. The universities that are into the, uh, the teachers' education need to comply with high requirements. They need to have the training in this particular field of study, be the first, second level, BA, MA, or five year, of course, that is in line with the classes that the teacher will be qualified to teach. In the structures, the university needs to have a unit or units that are into scientific research in this very discipline and um, pedagogy and psychology. As the part of the university course, a particular course students are required to select from among teaching uh, speciality so they can acquire pedagogical uh, preparation in the course of the studies, including uh, included alongside with a basic curriculum. And those who decide to become teachers post-graduation of the secondary school, they can acquire this possibility in post-graduate tertiary courses. Universities prepare teachers to exercise the duties of the teachers at the tertiary education postgraduate uh, studies as a kind of module. So substantial didactics, pedagogics, and the possibility to teach yet another subject because uh, very often the teachers have been set to this kind of requirements. Practical experience uh, is acquired alongside with uh, the university training, visit the schools and other um, units, assisting the teachers own class management, designing and discussion of the classes that were carried out by others. University teacher training is uh, provided by university teachers. Future teachers are taught by frustrated PhD students 
two or three years older than their own students. One of the greatest problems of the Polish uh, training standards so the, for the, biggest, the biggest problem for Polish teachers training standards is the so-called Winny odbywa się w przewalającej części równolegle zajęciami w uczelni i obejmować. Simultaneously, that is the visit to school and other entities, observation of the classes, assisting the teacher who is responsible for the classes, your own class conduct, preparation and discussion of the classes carried out by others. Teachers training at university is carried out by simultaneously, that is the visit to school and other entities, observation of the classes, assisting the teacher who is responsible for the classes, your own class conduct, preparation and discussion of the classes carried out by others. The so-called subject teachers training delivered by specialists of a particular field is the greatest problem. Normally, these are the teachers, the people who do not want to become teachers and they are not uh, satisfied with their lives when they land at school. I'd like to refer to Professor Andrzej Kajtan Brublewski's article on predicted future education. And Professor writes this way, you can see the vision of the world where the knowledge, that is the uh, amount of information that will be delivered uh, digitally into the brain via wireless connection with databases or interfaces that is implanted into the head. Digital brains are well ahead of us, especially when it comes to selection of uh, the best solution out of the uh, solution pools. Yet, no database, no robot is able to teach you how to, do, how to act creatively and solve new problems. Thinking is finding new solutions that you have never known before. This is what Professor Wróblewski writes. The OECD educational director, Andras Schreider, says, you cannot dream about uh, the profession you know nothing about. Today's youth 
are not that interested in ICT professions because there's a risk that we are teaching the generation for the past rather than for the future. Young people do not know the plethora of new professions and the job market, and the job market becomes so complex that people prefer to stick to what they have known best. But you need to remember that as much as 45% of uh, traditional professions will perish in the years to come, like 15 or 10 years. And my personal remark, according to my best professional knowledge, there is only just a handful of universities that have didactic offer, namely because of the candidates' lack, that have physics teachers, training courses for primary schools and secondary schools. This is Warsaw, Wrocław, Krakow, and other Mickiewicz University in Poznan. So who is going to teach good physics teacher in the future? In numerous uh, towns and cities, there is a dramatic lack of physics teachers. If they retire prematurely, who is going to teach children? Young, well-educated people will not go to school to earn as little as 3,000 zlotys net despite all odds. There is still a big group of aficionados, great uh, pedagogians that uh, go to schools to teach. Also, university's physics department has started teaching physics teacher, and the graduate uh, capabilities are as follows. We speak about thorough knowledge on classical and quantum physics, high mathematics and mathematical methods, ICT technologies, numerical methods that are used in physics and related sciences, the measurement, simple measurement systems uh, principles. The graduate with line of standards is able to use mathematical apparatus, use uh, the knowledge that they have acquired. <laughs> Deep in their knowledge, they are able to teach physics and mathematics. They can be ready to start uh, learning at the second level, tertiary education. So these are quite high um, requirements. Only recently in Poland, there's been the development of uh, assistance uh, for uh, physics teachers. These are the universities' meetings with other uh, teachers, publications, uh, seminars, schools, national and international festivals, outings to non-university centers, nights of scientists, competitions for uh, pupils, um, Olympics, uh, and vibrant associations that bring together physics and natural sciences teachers of university class. I hope that your activities and the teachers' activity will result in higher interest of uh, pupils in physics, and therefore there will be a greater number of candidates who would like to study physics. And here is uh, a very good uh, teacher's uh, opinion. A very good teacher needs to be involved in self-education. She writes, I've always, I've always wanted to be a um, teacher. I graduated from the four-year university course in physics, and I started working as a physics teacher in the school assembly and my own high school. Swiftly did I understand that I have to ameliorate my capabilities uh, and replenish my knowledge. Therefore, whilst being an active teacher, I made the best of the summer school for uh, physics teachers. Starting 92, my pupils were pretty successful. One of them was in the finals of physics Olympics, and five five people team was ranked fourth in the tournament of young physicians in Moscow. I have attended assemblies of uh, Polish uh, um, physicists. In Toruń, I learned uh, all the ropes about uh, physical experiments coupled with a computer. In the meantime, I graduated from ICT uh, postgraduate course for teachers, and I took part in um, the associations for natural sciences teachers. I have cooperated with some other center, 
ICT Education Center and Computer Utilization in Warsaw. I have participated in training for teachers at CERN and Dubna United Institute, and I have taken part in, it in different extramural forms in Copernicus Center. On a number of occasions, I took part in national and international festivals, physical stage and science on stage. During the first teachers' congress in Łódź, I shared the ideas uh, from international conferences and disseminated amongst uh, the teachers. I work in teachers on the job training center, sharing my knowledge. This is underlined. Last year, pre-high school and high school training, there was not even a single person who graduated from the university and is a teacher of the Felix, because these are usually mathematics, chemistry, German, music, and other teachers teaching physics at primary school. If somebody has graduated from uh, the Department of Physics, works at a number of schools, and therefore they have no time to develop themselves. There are not enough candidates to go to universities to learn physics. If they choose physics, this is um, technical physics at the University of Technology. That was quite an extensive quote from the teacher. Uh, this is a uh, lady professor who says that she that the teachers need to work on their own cap capabilities in order to attain wonderful results. Ladies and gentlemen, Polish school, owing to the teachers, this is what I want to highlight, enjoys international reputation. There is an international piece attached that is carried out every now and again. This is a, a program of international students assessment coordinated by OECD. And the objective of this is to gain comparable results from 79 countries with regards to the capabilities of uh, school graduates at the age of 18 in order to improve the quality uh, the uh, teaching services and organization of educational systems. And there is uh, the tabulation and what is our position in this uh, category of natural sciences and reasoning. We are ranked pretty high, 10 on 11. Look what kind of what kind of countries are ahead of us, what kind of countries are behind us. So this is something that we owe to Polish teachers. Very often we moan and groan speaking about our job. And we discover that this work makes us belong to the top of the ranking. Special kudos should be paid to primary and secondary school teachers for distant learning um, that is triggered by the pandemic state. Special thanks for physics teachers who have robustly prepared and carried out their classes illustrated with uh, numerous experiments. And at the end of the day, I'd like to show three photos, the first of which are lady students of the first class in around the beginning of the 20th century, nicely dressed, elegant girls. Most probably, they come from well-off city families. In 1933, Czerwony Krzyż in front of the school, there's a photo showing children living in the village, well taken care of, but food. That was the school in 1933. And these are professors and doctors that originate from them. These are good people despite the very bad conditions. And these uh, Jovita and Michalina in 2005, my granddaughters, this is the generation that starts uh, their life with their computers back in 2005. They have greater capabilities and possibilities. We should be happy and let's hope that they will utilize these. Thank you very much for your attention. May this be a fruitful meeting. Thank you very much for this lecture. Professor Navrocic prepared this in an asynchronous way, but there was a number of questions. Professor was unable to answer them. So what were the questions? First and foremost, Dr. Anna Piotrowska wants to know uh, the representation of girls in Rydzyn, because Professor was speaking about boys only. Dr. Ireneusz Książek draw attention to the fact 
that higher pedagogical schools need to have to need to be mentioned during uh, they operated during the People's Republic of Poland, and many teachers are disciplined from these schools, and they do operate in the Polish schooling system. Ladies and gentlemen, the consecutive point on our agenda. The next person to speak is Silesia University professor Jerzy Jarosz, who's got didactic uh, achievements, difficult to discuss and show in this brief introduction. Quarter of a century, he's been the head of didactic section at physics department. He's an expert on uh, cutting-edge didactic methods, especially at universities. And within the scope of the third mission of uh, the university, he made uh, physics popular in different places. Let me uh, quote. Silesia Scientific Café, Chorzów um, Festival of Science, and Professor Jarosz is the head of uh, Physics Demonstrators Club. Today, he's going to show us physical experiments in the past and what it looks or may look like today. The floor is yours. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for this warm welcome and excellent introduction. I'll try to live up to your expectations. My, the topic of my lecture is quite general because it refers to the experiment in teaching physics in the past and nowadays. There are two key words, experiments, experiment and teaching. First and foremost, I would like to emphasize that experiment in teaching plays a completely different role than experiment in science. In science, we use it to verify uh, some hypothesis or falsify the theory. In teaching, it is meant to provide context for the theory. Theory without context cannot be remembered easily. That is why this link to reality needs to be provided by an experiment. In order to illustrate this topic, I decided to choose um, some themes related to this place and to the place where the Polish physical society was established 100 years ago, namely Warsaw, University of Warsaw and Warsaw University of Technology. I also decided to place this then uh, in the history, because the experiment which was performed in the 17th century perfectly illustrates what happened much later. This applies to a certain popularization of physics. The experiment was performed in public. It was not academic, but meant for a wider public. In the experiment carried out by Otto von Gehrig, who was the mayor of Magdeburg at that time, who was uh, really well known of his activity and operations uh, dealing with physics of vacuum. The experiment is uh, very well known to everybody. The fact that it was performed uh, uh, so long ago uh, but it is still popular, is testimony to this fact. What was the purpose of this experiment? Senator Charlie's uh, statement uh, was well known down, saying that we live in the ocean of air exerting pressure on us, but these were only the words that were not so well remembered and understood as this experiment was. These words contradicted to uh, our everyday experience because we do not because we don't, do not feel the influence of pressure so much. Otto von Garek changed the reality and we learned that we live surrounded by air and that uh, pressure is exerted on our bodies. The next, the, the next uh, 
experiment, the next uh, presentation I want to refer to is the famous hot air balloon flight, which took place in Paris towards the end of the 18th century, so nearly 100 years after the Magdeburg's uh, demonstration. It was a very important, uh, important experiment, although approached with a certain caution. The same was true for uh, uh, space flights. We first decided to send the dogs on such a journey. In the case of the Paris uh, flight, the first uh, crew in the hot air balloon, which nobody knew where it was going to fly, was a sheep, a cock, and a duck. Since nothing wrong happened to them, they landed uh, safely, uh, the decision was made for humans to fly. Uh, these humans were uh, Francois de Rosier and Francois d'Arlande. The hot air balloon looked beautifully. It was made of paper in um, Mongofier's Mongof Mongof brother's factory. But the question is, was it really the first hot air balloon and whether it should really be considered as the first uh, uh, the first one ever created? Definitely, it was the first flight with, hu with humans. But we also know that hot air balloons were used in the past, but nobody dared to uh, send humans on such a journey. It happened in Paris. This uh, event was widely commented on, on and it marked uh, a new beginning in this area. There were subsequent uh, experiments, subsequent uh, demonstrations, and uh, it opened some new opportunities. I would also like to mention that there was another uh, another balloon uh, prepared by or developed by a physicist. We owe it to Jacques Charles, who is known in physics as the uh, creator of gas transformation laws. He had uh, a balloon ready, but it was not a hot air balloon, but a hydrogen-filled balloon. It enabled flying to, to long distances. A hot air balloon was able to fly only to the distance of uh, some kilometers. Charles' balloon was able to fly much longer. Uh, his uh, his balloon uh, took off some days after Mongofiel's brother's uh, balloon. This is uh, the beginning of uh, the era of hydrogen balloon flights. The person who uh, contributed to the promotion of uh, uh, the sport or demonstration of state-of-the-art uh, technologies was Jean-Pierre Blanchard. He was the first uh, person to fly uh, to fly uh, above the channel there were different methods and different machines used to uh, make an attempt to fly over the Lamarche Channel, but Blanchard also uh, did a um, balloon flight in Warsaw. But teaching does not only mean disseminating science and knowledge, however, it also means uh, academic uh, teaching not related to experiments. It means lectures and classes. The example I would like to share with you, but I would also like to emphasize the role of experiment uh, in it, and I would like to enumerate four names, Newton, Kirchhoff, Faraday, and Thomson. We know the, the, the laws uh, they developed. There are also some uh, units that derive from their names. So this is a group of excellent physicists, but not excellent teachers. 
two of them, as we can read in Kajetan Wróblewski's uh, book, bo books, two of them were not particularly good lecturers. It does not uh, mean that their lectures were poorly prepared. In the case of uh, in Kirchhoff's case, they were detailed and prepared perfectly. However, neither Newton's nor Kirchhoff's lectures were popular among the students. If it was not necessary to come to them, students didn't. The other uh, case applies to Faraday and Thomson, but you can also see it here in this slide. Both Faraday and Thomson uh, are shown with some tools, with some instruments they used during the lectures, and experiments were used to enliven their presentations. Michael Faraday was able to prepare six lectures about candles, but to say six lectures means to say nothing. These were six fascinating lectures. And I dare say nowadays nobody would be able to live up to such expectations. Owing to Kelvin, whom uh, I have mentioned before, we uh, made a journey in time and we are now coming back to the beginnings of the 20th century. We should uh, come back to this period because it was uh, then when there was a person working in Paris. This is the person uh, whose name we don't have to mention. It's enough to look at her photo. I mean uh, Maria skłodowska kiri who was uh, an exceptional uh, scientist, but also an exceptional educator. What was happening in education at that time? Towards the end of the 19th century, X-rays X -ray, X were discovered. Röntgen discovered what he called strange radiation. In 1896, natural uh, radioactivity was discovered. Then Skłodowska discovered radium and pollen. A few years later, Wilson's chamber was uh, constructed, and it helped us observe the effects or processes described uh, in a way not accessible to our senses by Becquerel and uh, Skłodowska, owing to Wilson's chamber, we were able to see particles which were emitted during radioactive decomposition. 1912 marked the discovery of cosmic radiation, and it was also possible to see it in the Wilson's chamber. I also uh, placed the establishment of the Polish Physical Society on this time axis. As you can see, that was the period of many discoveries and many uh, inventions. We also had uh, uh, Einstein's year. Skłodowska Curie was awarded with Nobel Prizes. But despite this wide array of uh, inventions, uh, we have to mention one more thing. Very important, um, very important event 
Skłodowska Kiri in 1907 established something which we could call cooperative. It is like uh, homeschooling or children's teaching. Nowadays it is nothing exceptional, but back then it was really a novelty. You can see uh, the names of uh, the teachers. Uh, Maria Curie was teaching physics, Jean Perrin chemistry, Paul Lanvin mathematics, Henri uh, Mouton uh, nature, Alice Chauvin English and German. Uh, <coughs> they were teaching a small group of children. You can see that both on the left hand side and on the right hand side, you can see the names related to the Nobel Prize. Why is it so important? Because uh, verbalism was dominating in education. Skłodowska Kiri completely changed the approach to teaching. She proposed a different method of teaching through experiment and uh, learning in a completely different way. The comments uh, which uh, were published in the press and also um, the way it was uh, mentioned uh, among the public sometimes were uh, not particularly nice, but it was definitely, the cooperative was definitely widely discussed. In the comment made by Kajetan Wróblewski, we can also read that uh, Skłodowska Kiwi managed to get rid of verbalism in teaching. It, there are some reports on Skłodowska's uh, lessons. Uh, they were, um, now we have them owing to uh, Isabel Chabang, who uh, was taking notes from her uh, from her classes. Wroblewski claims that many talents are lost uh, as a result of the common verbal teaching. Still, we do hope that the records from the lessons delivered by Skłodowska Kiri will help such some teachers understand that there are other methods of teaching that uh, you can teach uh, in a better way, that you can use easier means uh, which are available anywhere. Let us now come back to the year 1900. You can see uh, the painting uh, by Hermoyski, the storks, but it is uh, filled with an element that definitely existed physically but was not noticeable. It uh, could have been noticed if they had uh, the state-of-the-art model of the Wilson's chamber, but unfortunately they did not have it available. Still, they didn't, they didn't know that something like cosmic radiation exists. It was discovered 12 years later, owing to the possibility of entering a higher layers of atmosphere with uh, the hydrogen balloon. Victor Hess from Austria flew to the height of 5,000 meters and measuring atmosphere ionization decided that it originates from external radiation which illuminates our planet. The theory was not widely accepted by the scientific milieus, but a German physicist Werner Kohlherster confirmed uh, the discovery. You can see Hesses and uh, Kalherster's uh, balloons, uh, the, the heights, the altitudes are different, but we can see another balloon which should have uh, been here at this uh, altitude, but unfortunately it didn't manage to reach this altitude, uh, but I'm going to talk about it later. 
Since we are here uh, at the University of Warsaw, I would like to mention the Star of Poland, uh, which is also a kind of balloon, as we could say. It, it was not able to use a wickery basket. It is called the Stratostat. A special capsule was created, and it was featured with some measuring to instruments. The purpose of this project was to measure the space radiation and the atmosphere. Please note the names that were involved in this project. Mieczysław Wolfke was the head of the project. Uh, the scientific board included uh, Professor Szczeniowski, Jerzewski and Mięsowicz. These names are famous in Poland and globally. We all know their achievements and their curriculum vitae. The crew also included uh, specialists uh, in uh, hot air balloon flying. It included Captain Zbigniew Burzyński, who was uh, famous for his uh, sports achievements, but he also assisted Konstant Jotko Narkiewicz in his uh, research. Narkiewicz was working uh, for the Department of Experimental Physics, uh, Warsaw University. Uh, the two gentlemen were winners of uh, a number of competitions. Uh, Captain Bozinski won uh, the Gordon Bennett uh, Cup several times. Together with uh, Jotko Narkiewicz, meaning two years before the Star of Poland, they um, broke the global record of altitude using a balloon which was called Warsaw II. It was a balloon, not a stratostat back then. The project, uh, the intended project under the patronage of President uh, Mościcki was highly ambitious. The Star of Poland, as you can see here, was uh, a huge stratostat. You can see its comparison with the Palace of Culture and Science that was uh, built uh, some years later. It is simply for the sake of comparison. However, we need to remember that it was not the largest flying structure at that time. 1940s mark the end of um, various uh, flying vehicles. For example, uh, such airships, as you can see on the right-hand side. It used to fly earlier. Uh, at that time, it was not flying. Hindenburg was 245 meters long. As compared to the Star of Poland, it was much bigger. But these were only uh, aerostats and not stratostats. Here you can see Graf Zeppelin. To the best of my knowledge, this photo was taken near Gliwice, where it landed. Back then, they were also filled with hydrogen, and they were quite successful. You can see Graf Zeppelin that covered the distance around the globe in 21 days. Hildenburg was used on regular air connections between Europe and America. As you can see in the photo, that was a luxurious means of transport until the time came because it was filled with hydrogen. There were balloons inside that were hydrogen filled. They might have been filled with helium. Uh, helium deposits were already discovered there, only in the USA. 
o złożach Hodolanowych w okolicach Poznania. Hodolanów nie, a Poznań. Well, nobody knew about this at that time. The Americans imposed an embargo on Nazi Germany and helium was not sold to Germany. Therefore, the air vehicles had to be filled with hydrogen. Here is a very spectacular disaster whilst docking Hildenburg on his arrival from America. It was Arizona, if I remember well, that was the spark over electrostatic reasons gave rise to sudden inflammation and the Hildenburg burned down, not all the crew. There were 30 plus people who um, manning the ship, a um, hundred people all in all with 70 passengers. Let's return to the Star of Poland. It was Chochołowska Valley that was going to be the launching pad, you can see it being transferred. It was a balloon troops that were responsible for the operation. The Polish star was being prepared for the launch. Hydrogen was filled in. In the second picture, you can see it partly filled. The wind changed, the weather conditions uh, altered and the wind impeded the launch of straight to stat and therefore it was emptied of hydrogen which in turn made it more movable the frictions Again, it's not a good word, but this is a regular danger for uh, hydrogen-filled construction. Inflammation and the star of Poland was destroyed. It was not a critical and severe one. It was mendable. It was repaired, but as you can see, the date on a, of another launch was September 39. We know the date re in relation to other incidents. During the second star, the star of Poland was supposed to be filled with helium that was brought in from the States to Poland, but unused for the reason. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a remnant that is Star of Poland Square in Warsaw with what used to be aviation factory that designed and produced uh, the elements uh, for uh, Star of Poland. They produced nacelles. Uh, there is a plaque in 2002 or four by late President Kaczyński. Let's return to the topic of our presentation, radiation that we keep speaking about and the binding element in relation to Warsaw and Warsaw higher education institutions. In the photo, this is 1900's Wilson Chamber. It was a bit different uh, also. Uh, it's a regional invention. The original model is quite har characteristic. Today's versions are different. We use different types of chambers. Uh, the Warsaw University colleagues were so nice to prepare one. Uh, let's have the camera looking into the chamber. I believe we'll be able to see the decomposition of radiation, there is the radioactive source, this is uh, lead isotope, alpha particles emissions, look and see, from the central point uh, you can see radial strips of condensed 
alcohol vapor that the chamber is filled in. Not only do we see alpha particle direction once exerted as the result of radioactive decomposition, but we can assess the energy, the length of the trajectory that results in vapor condensation. Thank you very much. We were going to prepare some other experiments, but we didn't succeed. In opportune conditions, it was not an experiment as such. I'm speaking about the clock that we have on the slide. It comes as no coincidence here. It's quite characteristic. This kind of clocks and watches were produced in 1720. We heard about radioactive uh, watches that illuminated their own light at night. Luminescence made it possible to see the exact time. We might have used the appliances for other reasons too. Radium went to the homes luckily enough for a short period of time. We can see the American advertising uh, posters when a new paint undark is advertised, something that shines at night. Look and see, you can paint clocks and watches like, for example, night slippers, mm, buckles, so that you know where they are. Light switches might have been painted at your own discretion. Torches or compasses that you can see in the photo. Many of these utilized the paint that was radioactive. Undark is safe and secure, they say. Might have been true but only partially, it was by no means safe. And here is another slide, something we feel sort of looking at. Three factories that operated in the USA, they produced this kind of clocks and watches and appliances. The hands and the digits were hand painted Therefore, the notion of radium gals, the women who worked in these, did not have any protection against radiation. On top of that, uh, there was a guideline, the brushes to have very sharp end, and uh, they should be licked to moisturize. So, this way, radium was administered into the organism. They painted fingernails. Little did they know about the end effect. The factories that produced this wonderful self luminescence light. They discontinued because later on they knew the threat. Another chamber, Wilson's chamber, not only alpha ones, alpha particles. There is a beautiful example of visualization of alpha particles. There is also the space. Look at this trajectory. This one is not from the sample put in the cloud chamber. It comes from space. Space is with us. This is the trace of a meon. Secondary radiation demonstrated by Muon. You will see more non-radial traces. Here they are. 
Not only do we register radioactive decomposition, but also we have space visitors. It is even more interesting if we have a cloud chamber with yet another element that is a gas. Radon moves around, dissipates and looks pretty interesting. Let's return to teaching because there were examples associated with teaching, but let's say about teaching itself. The lectures continued for long. It had nothing to do with the general education scheme. These were the university lectures. General schooling, well, I won't say much about it because we have had an excellent lecture by Professor Navrocik before me. Let me just show you the map before regaining independence. Post regaining independence, that was a big problem. Not limited areas. One third of Poland post regaining independence was the subject of a schooling system. As Professor Navrocik was saying, there was a huge problem to mold it into one coherent system. Post Second World War, this melding uh, of uh, education was not that important. Professor Navrocik was showing one of the pictures, general schools. I'm showing this because you can see that verbalism at that time was not a predominant teaching method. It was more cutting edge before the Second World War. We can see the products of proud Cieszyn school students, physics workshops, natural classes. Not only did we use the word. One quotation from the books. Books were out after the Second World War when there were new borders of our country. Not only was the teacher important, look and see. A school attendant is also very important. Uh, if he is a craftsman, he might have helped a uh, teacher, although being a janitor or for a kind or an usher, uh, he helped the teacher in experiments, so he helped in education too. What's the thing today? The differences between now and then is not that technologies have developed. We teach in some other way. There are more differences. Karl Popper introduced three worlds, the actual physical world of states, the mind awareness state, and objective thought and ideas world. In the past, the information and the notions, uh, we received them from the first one. The third of Popper's, yes, through books, records. These were the sources of information. Most of the information goes from the third world by Popper. From the gate you can see in the beamer, that is, the screen of laptops and monitors, namely the internet. Education is not controlled in the schooling system. Happens some kind of independently as a personalized process. Such creations, which are non formal education elements, come in aid. It developed in the world. What happens at the beginning of the 21st century, the European Commission that advises to switch 
from STEM to STEAM, not only science, technology, engineering and mathematics, but we should have more cutting edge science, technology, engineering, art and mathematics. Maria Skwirowska did that at the beginning of the 20th century. Two words about interesting non-formal education, children's university that teach non-formally, children select what they want to learn. This is the advantage of a school. The two schools' objective is more systematic education. It would be nice to mold the functions. This might be a specific kind of non-formal system, credo project from Krakow. Nuclear Physics Institute of Polish Academy of Sciences, referring to Wilson's chamber, this one makes it possible to register the uh, Mm, things from space. Uh, we have smartphone as a tool, dispersed observatory that brings together the number of people with an app that brings the people together. We can analyze vast spaces. The image we've already seen by Hermoinsky, this might have been called credo, because if an observatory is equipped with smartphones, we might have painted this kind of picture. Some capabilities not available now are now generally available. It doesn't mean that we are free from, of verbalizing. Sometimes it's contrary. Cutting edge technologies may create conditions for verbalism and didactics. This may be a problem. We try to counteract it. It's last but one of my slide. We can see the um, All Polish Demonstrators Club, uh, created by Professor Nawrocik, created on the slide. Look and see. Amongst the speakers today, you will find more of the people present here. So the Demonstrators Club is in demand, is needed, brings demonstrators together. It's not fighting with verbalism. By the very nature of things, we exchange information and experiments, and lots of these you'll be able to see. Let's do our job. Let's not rely on technologies. Let's do our job. Silesia University has got a balloon, hot air balloon, a cutting edge one, that is used, as you can see, as a atmosphere control lab. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to remind you that you can pose questions to the speakers who are there, and you use the website to pose questions. I haven't seen any questions yet. Wait, Professor. Okay. I'd like to start with asking my own question. When we try to reach young people now, is it better to bring young people to demonstrations live or to become an internet star and use this individual digital modality? Neither of which. I believe these are separate ways. Both, both are useful. Young people love watching things. I love physics from Tomek Rożek. This, these channels are pretty popular. We can gain a lot from that. We can instill young people's inquisitivity so that they learn. 
They often come here for live demonstrations because this is a horse of a different color. When you are at a university, the very presence is the adventure, the magnet. Live experiment has got this charming spell you cannot really show on a flat computer screen. Not only the science center, but the university lectures proliferation. We don't have any questions. So let's thank Professor and now another part of our presentation. The next speaker is the person associated with Warsaw University Physics Department in Didactic Center, there is uh, the demonstration workshop, a very important part of uh, our university. So there are demonstrations that enhance the lectures by being interesting, correct knowledge-wise, and developed. We have a vast catalog. Dr. Krzysztof Karpiesz, the head of this demonstration unit, is worth his own soul. One thinks he likes. He likes traveling in time. Today, traveling in time, he's going to take us to the physical experiment world. What can be transferred to today's reality? Good afternoon. Thank you very much and thank you for this lovely introduction. Today we will witness uh, the travel in time to the years up to 100 years ago. My colleagues will help me in this demonstration. All of their names are mentioned in the slide. Grzegorz Grabecki from the Institute of Physics, Polish Academy of Sciences, and the whole team uh, of uh, my colleagues uh, uh, participated in the presentation of this demonstration. Ursula Dzienisiuk, Anita Gardias, Marek Romanowicz, Dominik Błaha. And Michał Godlewski, Renata Purgo, Sylwester Kopik, and Sylvia Lewandowska, who are not with us uh, due to uh, pandemic uh, reasons. Uh, and there is also me representing the University uh, of Warsaw from the Department of uh, Demonstration uh, through ed of Education through Demonstration. Our reference to the 1920s and 2020s will be presented in Pairs. We will observe supraliquidity at helium temperatures, uh, supraconductivity uh, at temperatures which we can expect in the 21st century. We'll see someone's uh, phenomenon presented in two ways. We'll measure the uh, speed of light. We'll also show that in the past, uh, big rooms were necessary. Now it is enough to have a table and it suffices. We'll also have some uh, popular science shows related to Tesla transformer as well as other devices and instruments. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you are going to enjoy our demonstrations. We'll start with uh, sharing a video that was uh, recorded with the participation of Professor Grabecki, whom you can see in the lab. This film is worth seeing because it shows liquid helium 
This is not a, a particularly common view. It's not, you don't have many occasions to see liquid helium if it is uh, while it is poured out of a cup or a tube. And you will see that it is possible. So let's get started. This is the whole rig in the glass tubes. We will pour our medium. You can see three. Oh, you can see a, a double structure of such a flask. Here you will have liquid nitrogen, liquid helium. It is all shielded with a, a protective layer. <coughs> this is an auxiliary system. This instrument is a cylinder with fine iron powder, uh, the size of single nanometers. This is liquid nitrogen that you are certainly familiar with. We use a ladle to pour it. You can see water or ice mist, and we pour the nitrogen to protect the very sensitive structure from the external impact of temperature. You can see it, is, it has been poured through this tube. This is the liquid helium layer, a very thin coat, and we start to pump it out. It starts to boil at 4.2 Kelvin. Uh, under normal pressure. Here we can see boiling helium at a lower temperature because the pressure is also lower. Please note what happened. It's no longer boiling. We can see at close-up that the surface is calm and it reached a supraliquid condition, meaning it is not vis viscous. Above this value, because of these uh, nanometer distances, the helium is able to eject and create a kind of fountain. There is a very thin stream. The liquid helium lever is below this outlet. And here you can see a fountain. Once presented in a different way and uh, under different light, you can see uh, this, this, uh, this stream which uh, managed to pass through such thin capillaries. This uh, phenomenon was first described in the 1930s. It was de discovered uh, towards the, the end uh, of the 1940s, whereas uh, there are other uh, phenomena of uh, superconductivity. And we'll see them presented according to the rules available in the 21st century. We can see, uh, we apply minor voltage, we pass the current through a sample of high temperature superconductor. The high temperature means 
the temperature above the liquid nitrogen, namely over 77 uh, Kelvin. The superconductor sample is placed under the, the, this, uh, this uh, slice, as we can call it, and it's protected from external impact. Once placed at a lower temperature, please note the vo voltage value at a constant current flowing 6 millivolts 0 millivolts no 5 czy 3 czy 2 tysięczne millivolts you can see opór uh, tego that this is really a minor fraction 0 millivolts podzielone 0 millivolts divided by half an ampere 0 ohms once we remove the superconductor and start to heat it, we will see that the resistance will increase. We can show this uh, experiment uh, in a classroom what the zero resistance looks like. Another experiment, another phenomenon related to superconductivity will be observed here. This is a diamagnetism phenomenon, means which means pushing the magnetic field out of the superconductor. We have a superconductor in the form of a pill. Above the superconductor, we have a floating magnet, which is additionally loaded. Pojedynczą kartkę. Bardzo proszę, pojedyncza kartka. I miejmy nadzieję, że się zmieści. Zmieściła się. No, dwie kartki pewnie też się by I think uh, two uh, pieces of paper would also enter the space. Proszę zobaczyć. It means that not only do we have uh, interaction and pushing out, but this is an experiment which we can well show in a classroom on condition that we can afford investing the money in such a superconductor sample. We can watch a similar uh, superconductor in a more spectacular arrangement. We have a superconductor sample which is cooled down. It's something which looks like a soap box. And please note that this train as, or a locomotive or whatever you call this uh, object, it, uh, this way of presenting is really interesting and gripping for pupils, for students, but also for teachers and lecturers. No, dobrze, bardzo dziękuję. Przejdźmy do drugich, do, do kolejnych e, obiecanych e, Let's move on e, 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 pokazów. To Drugie mamy w kolejności the following Zemana, demonstration, Zeman's phenomenon, e, w polu which is e, which takes place in the in the uh, in the magnetic field, we will see the effect of uh, sodium atoms fission. They will 
appear between uh, the magnet uh, poles. You can see the projection on the wall. Here, we have horizontal poles and within this gap we'll see the tra a trace of flame. Parowy czy 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 atomowy sód powstały wskutek podgrzewania Atomic sodium will appear as a result of uh, heating a piece of uh, salt. Standard conditions. We observe it all under yellow light. If the room was completely dark, we could we could see that the color of our skin does not really look particularly natural because this is the yellow light which is uh, with a specific wavelength formed as a result of transition stage between so sodium atoms. What will happen if we observe the shadow of this flame. This is the black cone. Uh, it, it is uh, um, projected upside down, but the black cone is the shadow of uh, the flame with the sodium atoms. In the light sent by other atoms at high temperature, they absorb the light. And we can, and we get dark area uh, where the sodium atoms are placed. What happens if we trigger the magnetic field? Consequently, in the space between the poles, this shadow disappears. It means that there is still sodium vapor, but it is not able to absorb the, the light which is cast because uh, they were subjected to fish, uh, fission as a result of magnetic field interaction. This is Zeeman's phenomenon and the way it used to be presented uh, in the past. Uh, we had lens, we had uh, magnet, a lamp, some thick cables. This is very spectacular. The version of the experiment uh, which we can perform in the 21st century will be presented here. And it's located in this very place. This is the 21st century. We've got a magnet too. This is a constant magnet that gives the same magnetic field by the value induction vector. The magnet is located here. And what we are going to do is to introduce the lamp. The lamp is introduced here just like it was the other case, but it includes cadmium vapor. So it's a different wavelength light. And we are going to see the reflector interferometer located in this part and we've got a screen the result of interferometry without the magnetic field impact it's located outside without going into the details how the strips are created if we administer magnetic field, look that the strips, let me do it again, 
No magnetic field, and now we have the magnetic field. First and foremost, they have expanded. Something may have been not well adjusted, each of which is composed of a lighter, darker, lighter, darker. The structure is different, as if there were more of them. So they underwent a fission or distribution magnetic field, as it was the case there. The properties were different because they were unable to absorb the same light. Here, they have slightly different light emissions so that we can see it as a number of strips. So we can try and test the dependence on magnetic field, the direction, concentration, induction, the wavelength, everything can be tested. You show the result to pupils, to students, to lecturers, and all of us can see that's the case. Let's go to the 20th century section located on our left-hand side. Join us for a spectacular presentation. This is the speed of light as it used to be shown in the past. One of the first measurements, well, observation rather than experiment, in the 17th century, Renner, the astronomer, carried out this 19th century Fizot Foucault, used the methods to measure the speed of light. They had their own appliance created for the purpose, and this is today's replica of this apparatus. The apparatus is composed of the source of light, laser this time. The laser is reflected from the mirror located here. Here is the mirror. And on top of that, the mirror has got a specific feature that I'm going to refer later on. It reflects uh, the dot of a laser. And the spot of the laser is reflected onto some other mirror located in the other part of the room. It's adjusted this way that the beam returns to the first one. It's in a focal point, so we are able to see that here. On the screen, this is the spot you can see. As a matter of fact, it's not exactly the, the one that we are going to speak about, but it's enough for today. What's going to happen if we start tilting this mirror? The light flashes and it's sent to that mirror. It needs to return and reflect onto an optical setting so that we can see anything. If it is not moving, nothing happens. When the beam travels back and forth, we have a slight tilt. The returning reflection will be shifted in comparison to the original one. This is what we are going to see. When we turn right, clockwise, there'll be one way shift, anti clockwise, the other way shift. The faster we rotate the mirror, the spot will diverge to the left or right. And this is what we are going to see, thanks to my collaborators. It, simply speaking, works, and it's by no means easy. Let's look and see at the reference spot. This is the spot we refer to. Will we have another spot here? 
when we do it. I'll bring in the microphone so that you will hear the high pitch that suggests how quickly the mirror rotates. And even higher. Little can you see. Here it goes. Look and see. The spot has been moving to the side. This is the one that is unable to dis return to the same place. Let's go to, to zero. And once again. To jest 1500 obrotów na sekundę. 1.5 thousand RPM, 1.5 kilohertz. A bit less than in a dental drill. Z wielkości odchylenia w jedną w drugą stronę. So the size of and how big is the spot moving? We can calculate it. This is 20 plus meters. The light is unable to return to the very same spot. In one nanosecond, the light covers 30 centimeters. This is the width of a sheet of paper. 20 plus meters, this is a few dozens of nanoseconds. How do we show? We are showing it again. How do we show it today? In the 20s of the previous century, or even earlier, of course, they didn't have lasers. There was a lamp, a collimator. We didn't have uh, the mirrors that were rotating so fast. So we needed to have a greater distance, a few dozens of meters in a room, one. And back was not enough. We had to have uh, the distance of kilometers or hundreds of meters in order to see something. The technology and techniques have changed. So let's go back to, to the 21st century. The 21st century has been set out here. Here we've got the source of light, a laser again, and the laser ejects the beam to the mirror and returns to the detector located just next to it. The source of light, short impulse, a detector is pretty fast. We are able to see a short impulse of light. The one that goes this way and the other. How to measure it? You compare it with a different impulse that covers a shorter way. This is an additional mirror. This is partially permeable. Some of this returns and some of this returns after a longer way. Two pulses. We can see it if you are more apt. You are able to see the time difference between pulses. When we cover the distance with the measure tape, you discover that 300,000 kilometers. So all students who see that, even in the first year of their studies, they are amazed. And lecturers are equally amazed by saying that the speed of light is constant, does not change. This makes us really happy. It remains stable in the room. Tesla's transformer. So we are returning to the other corner of the room because we are traveling back in time to the 20th century. This is Tesla's transformer. 
We are going to see the fire from hell. I might disappear, being myself a speaker, owing to electromagnetic problems. The 20th century. Can you switch it on? No, i proszę państwa. Tu widać taką siropusz. Ja może z tej strony. Zobaczcie. Ten prąd, który tam wchodzi, jest w stanie zaświecić świetlówkę. Ktoś może powiedzieć, że świetlówka to każdy umie, ale on również jest w stanie zaświecić żarówkę. Proszę zobaczyć, jak teraz widać, że prąd wpływa do żarówki, wypływa z niej. Going out, and it flashes. It's not full brightness, but still. Widać, że płyn, którędy wpływa prąd. You can see the current going in and out. Thank you very much. I'm going to ask you which way it goes out. Before that, would you please show us the machine this way? There is a beautiful transformer located here. It's the size of a pig. That's why we call it a piglet. High voltage is produced there. It's even increased by the other transformer located here. This is the transformer. Primary winding, three, and secondary, a thousand, three hundred times increase. It's not 50 hertz, but higher frequency. We can see electric discharge here. If you can show it here, don't come so close. Let's switch it on. Can you see that? Tak wyglądają. These are the 20th century appliances, picturesque, beautiful plates. How about today's ones? They look exactly the same, but they are stripped of the uh, of secrecy. One transformer with a number of windings. This is what uh, our students have made. And there is the other one, the secondary winding, and here is the element to eject this fountain. Electronics cannot be seen here. What is big and what makes an excellent impression, more reliable, I'll switch it on myself. I showed you that I was shivering a bit. Which way does the current go out? It goes through me to the ground. It's grounded. This is high frequency current, few hundreds kilohertz. It goes along the surface of my skin, the body that is a conductor, without any harm to me. It does not paralyze my nerves. It does not electrocute me. So the 21st century, a bigger sparks because... This is more efficient electronics. Let's go back to the 20th century again. And in the 20th century, there is the source of light. A light bulb. 
pokazywały a light bulb za pomocą tych żarówek można było pokazać can be used to show vibrations. There is an apparatus that uh, shows Lisa Jude figures. Lisa Jude figures, everybody knows that when there is vertical and horizontal vibration and when put together you can observe it on the wall. I don't know whether you can see it. I hope you can see it. And the other direction. One and the other, please. Can you see that? It would have to be um, darker. So let's switch the laser on. Let's have a better source of life, light. But the two mirrors that tilt up, down, left, right will show one and the other direction. You can see there is vibration composition that is better seen owing to the 21st century applications, but this is the 20th century appliance. Today's one, it's located here. This is a digital one, a digital appliance, and electronics is composed of two generators and an oscilloscope. The same pattern or a similar pattern that is a digital image, electronic image of vibrations, vertical and horizontal ones. You've seen that. I said that a light bulb is a source of light. You've got an exceptional chance to see 2,000 watt light bulb, the light. Can I have more? 2,000 watts. Press B. It's not fully bright. We didn't want to expose it to damage. There is a wire inside. You can see that it's pretty thin. And this is a today's light bulb with the same luminescence, the same light as the other one when full voltage is applied, but it uses 10 times less electricity. So how to see whether they produce the same light. So spectrometers is what we use for the purpose. We've got today's one, like all the appliances today, not spectacular. This is just a box uh, uh, sensor and a fiberglass connection. Uh, would you please come up here to see the results of the measurements? So let's see light intensity for the two sources of light. Let's move it away so that we have a better contrast. Look and see. Five hundred ten plus nanometers. What light? As what light it is? When we switch that off and have a look at the yellow light that the, we were using at the beginning, let's look at the results. Single line. I believe that you can see that 590 nanometers wave length. This is monochromatic type of light as such. Thank you very much. We can switch the light bulb off. Uh, it's the old type of a spectrometer. That's the way it looked like, a prism. <coughs> 
it had brass arms. You had to tilt it in order to draw it on paper. But look and see and see how beautiful it is. You can have uh, a magnification of this. You can savor it. We keep the dust of the 20th century on it. It hasn't been de-dusted. Not only is this an appliance, but also the dust that is old. Ladies and gentlemen, high voltage. The last bit, because we are pressed for time, the last thing we want to show, high voltage today, just a box that generates high voltages, be it a box or a transformer, whatever you call it. In the old days, in the 20th century, if you wanted to see high voltages, you had to have generators like the ones you've already seen, Tesla generators, or something that we are going to show you, electrostatic machine, or a unique construction, high voltage generator devised by Professor Piekara. We call it Piekara generators, 60 condensers, you can see them, that are coupled to 61 fields and consecutive to fields are connected with, you can show it in the back, the battery setting, 10 batteries or 15 batteries, 9V each, 150V each condenser is charged, so up to a few kV, like 9 kV. Are we able to do it? Yes. Let's couple this set and let's winding it. Start winding it will be charging condensers one by one let's see the result there is the outlet that has been connected with this kind of helium filled lamp you can see the flash of light so between the upper and lower part we have high voltage applied from the batteries that have been consecutively connected to these connection points anita can i have you here what can we do What can we do if we charge an electrostatic machine? I suppose you can hear the sound. We may not only discharge it, it I did it, but some, some charge was left. This is real discharge. You can make a real storm. This is exactly the same kind of discharge, the flow of ionizing current. The voltage was generated, was, was applied. The charge of uh, several hundred thousand volts. That's it uh, from us. Just to finish, I would like to share with you the following message to take home. I would be very happy if you remember what the 21st century engineering is able to do. This is a rectifying lamp, high voltage around 5 kilo, kilovolts, and contemporary diode. I have to 
hold it because if I put it uh, on the plate, you, it would be invisible. I really admire that the 21st century offers such small size and compact solutions. In order to see the size of the diode, you need to have uh, 300 amperes, and then uh, it uh, gives you the opportunity to, to, to touch and to grasp it. But this one is really beautiful. Thank you very much. I do hope you are going to uh, to watch more the more demonstrations online, although today you are watching uh, watching it online. I think that real live shows are much better. We have at least one question. It is about Zeeman's experiment. How, uh, what, is, what, is the, what is the direction of the magnetic field against the lamp and how is the interference image changes when we add the polarizer to the optic uh, Path. The question was asked by Ireneusz Książek. The magnetic field can be applied either the light pointing vector or across. Depending on the arrangement, the fission uh, can occur on various levels. The, the transitions between the levels and the fission depends on the type of atom that is uh, subjected to fission. In this, in one configuration, the fission is into three, in the other one, into six transitions with different polarizations. Some are linear, some are circular. But the application may uh, quench some of them and will not have uh, six, but four circles. However, it is important to apply it at the right angle. When we apply a circular polarizer, it will be of a different kind, so everything depends on the particular case. I know uh, the person who asked the question, and I can say I'll be very happy to discuss the issue in person. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are tight of time, so uh, I would like to thank Dr. Karpiesz and his team for preparing the excellent presentation. They are the heart and soul of this laboratory, or at least the representation of the heart and soul of this laboratory. Ula, Anita, Dominik, and Marek. Thank you very much. This is the end of the morning uh, session. We would like to continue as quickly as possible, but the next part, next session of our lectures requires some preparation. That is why I would like to announce a 15 minute technical uh, break. We are going to be back after the break. Natomiast wszystkim wykładowcom dzisiejszego poranka I would like to thank all the lecturers who delivered their presentations in the morning session.
Δώσε τον το δίκη. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome after the break. I have the privilege to, to facilitate the afternoon session, which is devoted to, uh, to teaching. We all know that uh, modern methods can assist us this way, and now Bożena Zgardziska and Karol Stanjikowski, who will definitely talk uh, about it in a clear way. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I am very happy to have the honor to present the uh, activity, the operation of the Lublin branch of the Polish Physical Society. However, first I would like to tell you how we fit the, pos the progress of physics. I'm not going to talk about our research, however, I would like to show a very important date for you. In 1953, the first demonstrations in physics uh, take place. So this is, this is the brick which we add to the structure of uh, physics. We can see the first documents that uh, show uh, what our audience was and how the demonstrations uh, progressed. As far as uh, our participants are concerned, concerned the building uh, was uh, of, the low, of a lower secondary school, so initially the demonstrations took place in different, condi in different conditions. The audience was always with us uh, for dozens of years there were many uh, attendees of our demonstrations. We decided to calculate the number of uh, participants. It turned out there were over 500,000 of them since 1953 in our university which was then not only which was then not uh, the Maria Skłodowska Curie University but other um, other schools as well what uh, how can we summarize uh, demonstrations in physics in numbers there were subsequent shows uh, and demonstrations uh, taking place they are marked by the blue bars Unfortunately, there were some years when it was not possible to organize them, just like this year when we were not able to contact them due to pandemic. The dots in the graph mark the number of people that work uh, towards preparation of such demonstrations. Since 1953, there have been over 230 people involved. I'm not able to enumerate them all by names. Selected photos show who was working towards uh, preparation of such demonstrations. We must not forget those who not only uh, prepare uh, demonstrations in physics, but support them as well. This is a big group of people who prepare uh, workshops, uh, instruments, uh, who deal with organization, preparation of our lecture rooms to carry out such a huge event. You can also see a caricature which uh, shows that we uh, approach our work with a blink of an eye. It is important to emphasize uh, that the history of our demonstrations is very long. I am not able to enumerate them all, but I would like to 
say that the history of demonstrations is the history of uh, showcases. As far as the exhibits are concerned, uh, they have not been affected by um, the passage of time so much. You can see our uh, colleague, Wacław Staszewski, in front of a special truck. He was dealing with measuring forces and we were using the exact system, the exact rig which he used also in our demonstrations. The last decade marks the period of my involvement. I have to confess that this is really a big work to prepare such demonstrations. We try to prepare new experiments or present them in a better way. It requires a lot of effort and involvement on our side, but this effort is definitely worth worth it. The first uh, demonstrations took place in 1953. In 2015, we are celebrating the 60th anniversary of demonstrations in physics. It marked, uh, it, it was an opportunity to meet, to remember our history. As you can see in the photo, the auditorium was full. We awarded our members with anniversary medals and Josef Zhuk was uh, presented with a commemorative diploma. Unfortunately, as I said, in 2020, we were not able to organize such uh, demonstrations uh, real life because of the pandemic. But since 2018, we have been working on a new project. It turned out particularly valuable uh, this year when students were not able to come to us. We uh, created a repository of uh, experiments in form of cases. They are distributed among uh, schools in order to perform such experiments in the classroom. When young people are not able to come to us, we offer the equipment, instruments or special classes to develop their interests. We are not able to move everything online, so I suppose this is a great alternative. It's time to move to the core of my presentation, namely experiments and new technologies. I would like to mention the part which describes that our Lecture room was the place of demonstrating how television works. And again, it was uh, the it was the opportunity to create another caricature of the events. But I would like to tell you now how technology evo evolved over the years. Let me start with describing what I'm holding. This is a micro camera. It can be used for showing, for instance, a, pa a, a, a part of my garment. It is used for digital transmission of signal. You can see fibers, but I can also see a a bigger magnification to see what the fibers look like exactly. 
Let us now move, move on to showing what television looks like nowadays, or perhaps I should say what computer looks like. It turns out that young people don't know what, what television lamps are. We got used to the moving images generated on a flat screen. How is uh, such an uh, image built? We built a matrix of uh, the of the screen we have to know where the micro camera is it is scanning the white field we are used to understanding a white piece of paper as a white piece of paper while in the screen it means activating all colors of the diodes that are in the colors of our screen. You can see pixels of the LCD matrix, which uh, are composed of uh, blue, green, and red. This is RGB representation. How are colors rendered? What about yellow? There is no generator to render yellow as the basic color. It is always a combination of color. Green with uh, blue added, red and blue. Black means all pixels, pixels are out. This is an LCD matrix, but there are also other types of matrices. We can use a telephone or smartphone. Young people will be interested in it. What you can see here is Super AMOLED matrix, light emitting diodes, but also the touch screen function, which means that all these elements work together. The pixels look a bit different. The important point I want to make is that we are used to RGB B uh, color scale, but is it always so? If you try to print a colored image with a printer, the colors are not the same. In order to prove it, we have prepared a piece of paper, printed piece of paper, remembering the colors uh, of cartridges that we have in our printers, we can easily see that this is the combination of the CMYK colors. Black can also appear uh, as an additional color, but it is generated by combination of the pixels. The spectrum scale of electromagnetic is the one that we can see, the visible part of the spectrum. So we can take a step ahead following our colleagues. Light emitted by light bulbs. How about different light bulbs? All the light bulbs that we have have the same kind of light for our eye. It's white. We can imagine that there are triggers for um, our eye bulbs. We register the colors uh, in the eyes. This is a, a classical type of uh, light bulb. What range we see? Okay. 
Photoluminescent light. Look and see. We don't have continuous spectrum. The green part of the spectrum is the one that comes from Mercury, right hand side ones from gonium. And the third of the lamps is LED. And its spectrum is as follows. There is the ultraviolet uh, diode signal. The light pushes the light emission from the rest of the appliance. You may find it interesting to show that home lights uh, on desks of young people are LED lamps. Spectrum is similar to what we have, to what we presented in the last one. Sometimes there is the color change in this kind of light. Our colleague keeps changing that color of the light and you can observe the spectrum change. All right, enough. We can imagine that somewhere here, away from the red area, there is one more type radiation. Before we enter this, let's observe another experiment of classical type. You show at lessons of physics. The heat conductivity requires this kind of star, a number of metal rods made of different metals. You heat it up. At the end of this, there is a dot of wax that melts at different speed, depending which part, part of metal it's attached to. We have used a different appliance. Technological advancement in temperature detection. Thermocouples have been used, coupled with software to measure temperature in different parts of the appliance. On the screen, you've got the rods made of different metals. The same geometry, heat conductivity is different. If we heat up the central part, the heat will be transferred along the roads, reaching the ends with temperature sensors on. The central part is about 100 degrees centigrade. You can see yourselves that the speed of heating up depends on the material they are made of. The higher heat conductivity, the higher the temperature is, and the faster the temperature increase. The only one that I wouldn't be able, wouldn't be afraid of touch, is the one that uh, takes increases the temperature the highest. Inox one. Writing an abstract for this, uh, I decided to show you evaporation experiment. Let's switch to evaporation. The software we have prepared will be used. The temperature sensor is located at the end of this element. We are demonstrating. There is a bit of a cotton wax to keep acetone. We have emerged it and it evaporates. It's difficult to show evaporation, but temperature lowering is one of the consequences. High energy liquid particles escape, so higher energy ones, uh, there's less of them, and the lower temperature in the container. So we can see how temperature lowers in the vicinity of the temperature sensor, the thermocouple, because acetone evaporates fast 
intensity of evaporation is the characteristics of this liquid. Jeszcze chcielibyśmy Państwu pokazać, że skoro mowa jest o temperaturze... Speaking about temperature, there are appliances that make it possible to observe... Well, we need a piece of cable for that. Infrared observations of the image. So, let's use thermal imaging camera. We are going to switch for thermal imaging camera signal. Ready? It takes a while. These are not technical problems. I hope we are able to cope with that. Thermal imaging camera shows infrared image. It's me. I can wave at you. You can see it's me. We can measure temperature to see if my body temperature is raised and I can speak in front of you. I want to show that this thermal imaging cam camera shows the difference of um, objects we are using. There is what home what warm water in the tub i used the tap water for that you can see the temperature at the heat transition element we can show the cameraman the camera might be visible and the elements that require or produce heat are also seen on the camera. These are the light bulbs and the chairman wants to be seen in thermal imaging camera. Look and see. Look at the eyes of our chairman. Let's show him again. Professor is wearing glasses. As you know, this is UV barrier. We cannot see the eyes of Professor. Thank you very much. By showing one spectrum range, we should also refer to the other. Therefore, I'd like to show you one appliance, a simple one. We are switching devices. Carol is going to show that. What is that? This is radiation detector, small scale one. Instead of using big detectors, we can use a small crystal coupled with SIPM photo couplers. It's his passion. The multiple multi prototype is his passion. It's a watch that is quite popular between 1920 and 1960, the hands were covered with radio. Allow me to refer to, to Maria Skłodowska Kiri, the patron of our university who was into radiation. I just want to show you that detection may take place with the use of these handy detectors of radiation. The end result that we could attain we could see the spectrum for isotopes. Radium paint is no longer used. They no longer radiate, but what remains is the radiation as such. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening and watching our presentations. Thank you very much.
I know that no audience is a disaster for didactics. We want to have a contact with our discipline, beautiful experiments, cutting edge technique to reach young people, not only young. There were no questions on the internet. Making these available <coughs> outside, what has been the result until now? Are people happy? Do young people write to you? Give us more. Since April, we have been preparing our cases. The project schedule has been co-financed by the National Freedom Institute. We started leasing them in September. The first week, more than 750 people subscribed to the lease, list of users. More than 4,000 people watched the internet website of the project. They were interested. We've got lots of requests to contact them, to show teachers how to use. Lots of calls, lots of questions. Can we support them? Can we make them available? What's the date? What's the amount? The project finishes in November, but I do believe that once you apply for finances, we'll be able to gain even more to expand our repository. Congratulations. I hope it will be developing, not because of the pandemics, but some of those who live far away from Lublin, Warsaw, Wrocław, they may use it. I hope we'll be able to open these points, but that's the future plan far-reaching one. I hope we can do it. Thank you once again. Thanks for coming, despite difficulties. And I hope that this have a high viewership on the internet, the new media. And Ms. Maria Dobkowska and Mirosław Łoś the outlook on the experiment at school of the 21st century. What you can do at school with the use of new technologies. These are multi-annual uh, experiences. Real aficionados, I'd like to have such teachers. Lots of things associated with science on stage. If you're ready, the floor is yours. Still preparing. Today abounds with surprises, but a true teacher needs to be ready for everything. Even in the situation where there is no computer, no power supply, they need to be ready. Maya and Mirek in front of you. The floor is yours. Hello and welcome. We are thrilled to be able to speak in front of you. It's real honor. We are happy enough to belong to this generation that lived at the turn of the century and millennia. We are an exceptional generation. As the president said, Professor Andrzej Wysmołek, we are associated with knowledge dissemination, making physics popular. We attended the teacher's uh, course, Huntsville, Alabama Space and Rocket Center. The image you can see in the presentation, it's us. 
under the Atlantis Space Shuttle. The advancement of the 21st century Tempora Mutantur, not Musamur, in Ilis. This is what touches upon us. The times are changing and we have to change too. We need to keep up the pace with whatever is happening. The only thing that does not change in knowledge transition, something that we need to remember, we cannot possibly discourage, we need to encourage. I am really sad having watched the millionaires uh, on television. I love watching it because I check my knowledge myself. There was a person on TV. This person seemed to be well read and cultivated. Archimedes' law was the question about. The person said, I hated physics, the person shouted out. If she shouted out the physics, we are to blame. I hated the first reaction suggested she would get blocked. On a second thought, she started thinking logically, she switched off the negative thinking. If there are too many formulas that pupils have to learn, they will forget what is a part of her life. If something pushes us upwards rather than downwards, which direction are we going to move? And she provided a positive answer, despite the fact she hated physics. I felt really sorry upon hearing something of this type. Where does that come from? It comes from the fact that we forget that we ourselves and our children, we are interested among the world we live in. Not necessarily do we want find the answers to the questions. If we remember about this natural interest of children and adults, only then will we be able to protect ourselves from discouraging them. We'd rather encourage them than discourage them. We can help a lot, us, the parents, the teachers. The Internet is a vast resource if we are not ready ourselves, having graduated from the university. We will find lots of very simple yet interesting experiments. The poster on the left-hand side was prepared by our wonderful colleagues. One of them lives in Germany. The other one in Poznan. Both of them prepared a very interesting experimental set. Viktor Nijitsky, many people remember this gentleman. The third picture is our physics department colleague who is also showing very interesting experiments. Physics for the youngest. We are going to show the capabilities we have. It's encapsulated in our presentation. So whatever is around you might be of use for physics teaching. One thing we need to remember about, the virtual world cannot possibly replace the actual world. If I had the laureate speaking, she was the department laureate, uh, speaking about the best teacher who didn't like experiments, I felt very sorry again. 
because each and every one of us should remember a day without a simple experiment, even the simplest one, is a day lost for education. This we need to remember, what we have heard, what we have heard about the 27th year's cornerstone for today's teaching of physics, as Professor Navracic was speaking about, remains unchanged. We are in the consecutive century, but we should teach so that experiments are there in front of pupils' eyes. Very often you can reach out for them very easily. These are hands-on experiments, something we touch with our own hands. We remember that best. <coughs> you know the pyramid of knowledge acquisition. It's best acquired when we check it ourselves. We cannot remember, uh, forget that mathematical apparatus is a prerequisite. But we cannot kill physics with over-mathematics content. It will be there, it will be used, but if we introduce it at the beginning, there will be the contact with the true world. The hands-on experiments are the ones that we can uh, use smartphones and musical instruments for. We can harness them for experiments. This is the Peruvian instrument. Multanki is the Polish name. I won't be repeating this experiment, you can do it on your own. If you use pan flute or you have the app, spectrum analyzer, you can check how the spectrum looks, where it shifts, where is the maximum of the wave from these to those pipes. This one is the shortest, so the frequency is the highest, and the shortest wave in the air. It's the shortest. And then, at high school, when they try to change the standing wave, in glass vessels, as we used to do, it will be easy and obvious if they had seen that this one is short and the wave is short too. These experiments have been prepared by Mirek Wash. Hands-on hands -on experiments. Well, by students, yes, yeah, students. Prepared by students and carried out by students. These are pretty simple things. There are three mirrors. Matt's book to discover symmetry had uh, mirrors attached. They deflect easily, so in one image you can see three types of mirrors and they behave differently despite the same object, the same uh, length. One is reverted upside down, the other is magnified. A simple thing, as you can see, one image, if you do it on your own, they've made a film out of that. On the right-hand side, 
a very simple instrument to check uh, mechanical resonance once you set to vibrations. Physicians know what that is. Another pendulum is triggered for vibrations once one is moved. The third shows uh, there's a series of images that the pupil uh, created laser impressions. It was uh, all Poland competitions for photos. And this is uh, a part of my car. One reflection. The other side, the light goes through. A very simple instrument. You can put a regular pane of glass. It doesn't have to be maca, but we had this one, so we used it. As I was saying, teachers and pupils have to learn all the time. Where we learn, how we learn. We had Professor Navrocik speaking at length in his presentation. We can find, as the teachers who come unprepared, we can find it in many places. The teachers might look for this in many places. We are showing a number of examples. Copernicus Science Center, a special award from the Polish Physical Society. I hope that other centers that have done a lot will gain these two methodology centers and so on and so forth. We've heard a lot from our colleagues in Lublin. Higher education universities take up lots of initiatives. Silesian University, Professor Jerzy Jarosz, Children's University in Warsaw. There are special classes for pupils groups. Some universities, including ours, they open up labs for pupils. There are many of such possibilities to deepen and update your knowledge. A very interesting society is science on the stage. We'll talk more about it during the poster session. Uh, science on stage is supposed to support teachers through peer learning. Initially, it was meant to promote cooperation between teachers, scientists, academic teachers and uh, school teachers. Science on stage, which was established as physics on stage, was uh, founded by the largest labs. Later on, however, without their support, it was simply based on the cooperation among teachers. It became a fantastic center supporting teachers' work. The uh, Science on Stage uh, publishes their uh, periodicals. We have the Polish translation of this periodical. And the paper uh, you can see here I in the I stage was the one owing to, uh, owing to which uh, Jagoda Bednarek, my student, uh, can be proud of uh, international publication. She was uh, preparing a student's project 
and showed that vibrations of a gravitational and spring pendulum have the same uh, time wavelength of, as you can see here, of deflection. We can see that uh, the spring pendulum uh, vibrates along a straight line, and we can register the changes in time with uh, the frame analysis of the pendulum position, whereas the gravitational pendulum, such as the Galileo's one, vibrates not along a straight line, and we can see the sine wave as well for lower secondary school students. It was a real nightmare that a sine wave occurs suddenly. This kind of a function is not presented in the uh, mathematics uh, curriculum in uh, primary uh, schools. And they saw, saw it themselves, seeing uh, how it is formed and how it occurs. Volume 2 was devoted to the use of uh, smartphones in teaching um, science and uh, uh, natural science. I showed uh, sound analysis using a smartphone. Here you can see that students used their smartphones to measure noise. You can read the title of the project because teachers uh, propose something for other teachers. There are different groups of uh, teachers from the whole Europe. And several groups were dealing with noise and with sounds. In our school, we carried out a project devoted to noise pollution. This slide shows uh, what I have already mentioned, Mo moving a step ahead using new technologies for traditional learning. It was also uh, published in iStage 1 and iStage 2. Smartphones were used for similar experiments. Volume 3 was devoted to football. That is the topic of interest to all students. It dealt with physical analysis, but also various aspects related to the sports discipline. It, it contained lots of interesting ideas of uh, experiments to be used during the lessons. They are all available on the Science on the Stage uh, Website, there are scenarios and uh, recommendations on how to use them in practice. As my colleague has mentioned, all these volumes are available on uh, the Science on Stage uh, uh, website. If some printed versions are available, they can also be uh, requested. Unfortunately, not all of them are in Polish. Uh, they are all available in uh, English and in German. However, for the majority of physicists, uh, this is not a uh, particularly complex language because we all use uh, the same instruments and tools. Maya was the first uh, person to use it in her school, and we uh, were all 
performing the same uh, experiment, experiment. We showed it uh, during the first uh, Congress of uh, Teaching Physics, and uh, uh, the idea was uh, welcomed with interest. Apart from the ability to perform traditional uh, experiments, uh, various opportunities of using ICT in own experiments are demonstrated. I would also like to point out that Zbyszek Czmiel was also involved in the development of the scenarios. I would also like to say that uh, we Okay, let me put it this way. We were taken aback and we approached it, uh, we approached the 21st century uh, with slight disbelief that we could teach project in a project-based way in lower secondary schools. However, it was quite successful and we found uh, lots of inspiring ideas in science on stage. Polish teachers really took advantage of them because Polish schools were not ready for it and uh, it was mandatory for us to carry out uh, educational projects, which was excellent. Now we uh, are sorry that uh, lower secondary schools uh, were closed down because projects helped uh, students, helped pupils to practically conclude and to learn hands-on. But now there is not enough time uh, for it. And the next uh, volume of uh, Science on Stage is devoted to coding. It is uh, devoted to STEM education. We have science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. This is available only in uh, English, but we shouldn't be afraid to use it in practice because we have uh, excellent students who will handle it. For 20 years now, Science on Stage has been organizing international festivals in which uh, teachers from all over Europe and uh, from non-European countries uh, meet. We have participants from Canada, from Kazakhstan, Ukraine, Bio uh, Ukraine and Belarus will be invited. We'll see how it is going to follow. But this is definitely an excellent opportunity for for experience exchange. After the festivals, there is lots of uh, interesting material left uh, in the science on stage resources. Polish teachers, owing to Professor Nawrocik, who uh, is uh, very much concerned and looks uh, after these festivals, were able to um, participate in, um, in the festivals. First, we have a Natural Science on Stage Festival, which attracts 350, 400 uh, teachers uh, from uh, Poland. Then the Polish representation is selected among of them. Those of them who are mentioned in the list of the Congress participants are those who participated in the Science on Stage Festival and they were also awarded. Unfortunately, due to pandemic, they are not with us. 
However, you can find their Experiment, the information about their experiments uh, in the educational bazaar. You will be able to see uh, the videos uh, later on. The first presentation was supposed to be delivered by Dr. Labo from Wrocław. The experiments were supposed to be spectacular using a fan and a stroboscope. It, they, were, they are devoted to colors, and this group received a distinction for their experiments. Experiments uh, during science on stage and during natural science on stage. I'm not going to present uh, uh, to print them, to present them, and to present the list of their achievements because. Uh, the list is very long. You can enter Dr. Labo website, but uh, I definitely recommend watching the videos afterwards. I would like to mention Eva Pater, who is uh, the teacher of physics. She was uh, supposed to present a very interesting experiment with, with sound resonance in a glass plate and the glass uh, plate breaks, just like in this uh, famous uh, show where a singer was able to break the glass. The late Professor Guy was also showing this experiment. Zenona Stojecka, another teacher, is another teacher who was uh, who was awarded together with her partner from Romania for her presentation. And Adam Buczek, who also couldn't make it to us, you will be able to watch the video he prepared during our afternoon session. Zanana Stojecka presented excellent experiments with magnetic fields. Ms. Stojecka uh, prepared uh, some interesting uh, presentations as well. Adam Buczek um, participated in a number of uh, demonstrator meetings, so he's well known to the majority uh, of, uh, of us. Since uh, Zofia Gołąb Mayer is uh, quoted here, I would like to say that uh, this profession, where there are so many women, has excellent partners teachers of physics. We remember what uh, Maria skłodowska Kiri did with her uh, cooperative, and I would also like to express my gratitude to Zofia Gołąb-Meyer, who publishes lots of interesting uh, content in Photon. She is uh, uh, like the supervisor of all teachers of uh, physics. Uh, Dagmara Sokołowska uh, is also deeply involved in assisting teachers of physics. Photon and neutrino are very interesting periodicals. This slide um, quotes an excerpt from a paper written by Zofia Gołąb Meyer. This article applies to teaching physics and it also includes a part devoted to what happened to 
uh, teaching physics. The positive aspect uh, that uh, Zofia Gołąb-Meyer notices is that at uh, the turn of the century, well, uh, that there was a breakthrough at the turn of the century. We can say that at the turn of the century, the situation has turned. The method, uh, the methodology of teaching has changed, and it changed uh, in such a way that it uh, came back to the to the 20s and 20s and 30s. What we consider modern solutions nowadays was regarded as the necessary standard in the past. However, now we have uh, plenty of uh, state-of-the-art technologies and ICT which make things simple. This way, teaching physics can be really interesting for students, and I am absolutely convinced that if we are able to uh, to persuade the teachers of physics that this is the right way, this uh, crisis situation we witness uh, nowadays when young people don't feel like becoming teachers of physics uh, can change. I want uh, in addition to what I have said a moment ago, what I find most important, Maya was speaking about this too, we can carry out a number of uh, hands-on experiences in the sense that we can have simple instruments, things around me. I'm going to present an exhibit with me. Look, it's a kind of toy that was made by a pupil 15 years ago. Mini project, as we call it. It was one schoolgirl's idea, one switch on, they are on. Let me press another one, on, but differently, weaker. How about pressing all of them? You can see what you can see. There's a whole instruction, the circuit diagram, nothing special, just a few cables, four light bulbs and a battery, ready and operational. And look how worthy didactics-wise. I don't have to explain to the physicists these are two kinds of connections. You can take a step further. Without opening it, you can measure voltages at different points and have some deeper analysis. High school pupils find it especially important. A very simple example. This is the project method advantage. These may be simple experiments designed by pupils. It was a schoolgirl that might have done extra reading, but the whole idea was her original idea. I have had it for 15 years. So you can see that it is more than just one showcase. And the second part, simple, easy materials experiments, 
something very important. There was an old chemistry and physics textbook that informed that the main problem was to make a glass vessel. You had to cut a glass bottle into parts because you didn't have plastic ones. I've been working since the 80s. I used to do things like this. So I learned how to cut glass. It's a story for another day. Lots of interesting physics included there. ICT technology part now. I hope some of you remember somewhere around 1980 there was a sketch joke but I couldn't find it a physicist chucking a computer out of the window measuring the time in order to calculate the gravity forces there's a general change today. I'm going to show you an example. How general was it? It was funny some time ago. They used the computer as a big simulating and computational machine for more complex tasks. It was not useful at school. When new, with the advent of the new computers, and I'm quoting a very nice sentence here. It is from Zofia Gołąb-Mayer. Teachers started to create computer-based laboratories the beginning of the 90s, there is physics didactic seminar back then in Smyczkowa Street, also university. There is a Polish didactic seminar. And we had a teacher from a small school near Siedlce. And he brought a computer attached to a TV set. What it could measure computer-based laboratory nobody knew what was that what are the interfaces and he brought something from a peaceful and tranquil place and they did something that was a jaw-dropping experience for us. Then he said what he was doing, how he was doing that. You know what it is all about. So these kind of aficionados resulted in on-the-job training centers for teachers. <coughs> And then the capabilities and equipment arose. Now you teach them how to use them. And we have all kinds of interfaces, coach lab. Different companies, different countries and a teacher gets ready-made toolbox that makes it possible to do many things together with our students as far as the experiments uh, go. And here is the example. Raspberry P microcomputer, that is. I'm not going to take anything out. 
There is no Raspberry image, but look at the, the wording here, SA. To me, my students and I, we got it from the space, Europe Space Agency. We had to come up with an idea at the space station. Similar computer is mounted there. I learned how to use 3D printer because they made the casing themselves. 150 zlotys is the price of this computer. It got three inbuilt sensors, temperature, pressure, and something else. Moisture, I think. The set you get from SA, there's a camera, infrared and regular one, so the ones that you can do once you have this kind of little set and lots of instructions that you may or may not use, different sensors. The one that is outside is the sensor distance, to measure distances. A kind of a bat, it sends out the ultrasounds and receives from the other sound, uh, side. If you can do it, if pupils cannot do it, you get an upright instruction. You can write it in scratch what Maya was speaking about in the last issue of Science and Space. More advanced pupils can program it, and you can do experiments of all kinds. There is about 30 sensors of all kinds. 250 zlotys with 20 sensors. It's not big money. If you buy a coach lab of this kind, one set, 400, 500 zlotys. Four or five thousand only now. ISA, ESA, European Space Agency. They have been helping teachers. You can get such sets. It was one of the founding institutions for science on stage. Let's switch the slides. There's another idea. I can see how many sensors we have in this set. This is the Britain's created little computer for their schools users. Comparable prices. This is a microcomputer. The casing was to have the inputs and outputs. You can carry it in your pocket. You buy five or six sets of this kind to use them at school. And here we go. So these are the capabilities. And here is the example. Microbit distance measuring and ultrasound sensor. And the second appliance that all pupils have in their pockets, practically speaking, this is a smartphone. Somebody is going to give me a ring. Let's hope they will not disturb, because this is the experiment time. If we have a handset of this kind, 
Pod tytułem. We download the app. No co? Jakie masz sensory? What sensors are on board? I to jest aplikacja darmowa. This is a free of charge app. They have this in some of the handsets up front once you buy it. No i tu widać co ja tutaj mam. Akcelerometr. Accelerometer, field sensor. Co tu jeszcze jest? Gyroskop. Gyroskop. Czujnik światła. Light sensor. A camera. Można mierzyć grawitację. Gravity. Linear acceleration. Odległości. Distance. Can be measured with this sensor. There's a microphone. Przyrząd właśnie do różnych akustycznych rzeczy. Different acoustic things it can be used for. What do we have in this computer? And different applications. And there is the app that includes the experiments you can make. Some of them have been set up. If you don't like. My zawsze lubimy, żeby uczniowie dostali wszystko na tacy. To give everything to your students up front. You don't have to use this app. Mamy mało czasu, chcemy coś zrobić szybko. But if we want to do something quickly, no więc wtedy można to wykorzystać. No i teraz przejdziemy. You can use it. Będziemy trochę czarować. There's going to be some magic in front of you. It was used to be called Polish Atom Agency. Here it goes. And here is the end of this joke that I was uh, telling why physicists need computers. The smartphone is much better computer than the one 40 years ago, APM286, much higher capabilities to perform calculations and to run other operations. And here is the experiment. There's literature on the topic. You've got the address where I have taken the chart and the image from, plus calculations. No i rzucamy, wisi sobie ten, ten można go z ręki puścić. You can drop it out of your hands. And it drops on a pillow. Performs measurements. You can do it different ways. There is a shock sensor. And shock sensor stops the count clock. You can use sound sensor too. Lots of possibilities. Here is the example. And here is the example of the experiment that we performed with Maya. She had a two meter spring. The result was much better, especially in the darker picture. You can see simply the position of the mobile phone. There was a grip of this kind. You can test it. We copied the data to spreadsheet, and you can do anything with the data. We have shown you step by step in one of the presentations. You've spoken about this. We can carry on. We are going to show you one thing. The training that was organized by Nuclear Agency, or whatever the name is, 
Oni, no, ale to można sobie kupić w, w internecie za jakieś chyba 200 zł, 250 zależy gdzie. I to jest, co to jest? I tu mamy napisane. Smart Geiger Cancer, licznik Geigera. To oczywiście nie jest jakiś super czuły. And this is the thing that you can buy for 200 zlotys on the internet, smart Geiger counter. This is a semiconductor based one, not an advanced one. Gamma and X radiation is captured by this. Parę rzeczy można zbadać. Sekundę. You can test just a few things. Oh, the appliance says no. Okay. Co najważniejsze? What's most important? It's got a thing. Oh, not not the one. Po prostu autokalibracja. Czyli odpada problem. It's self-calibrating thing. No dobra. I teraz czas pomiaru trzy minuty. Nie będziemy tyle czekać. Ja tylko puszczę, żeby wyjść. The measurement time three minutes. Let's switch it on. Get some signal. You just press start. Very simple launch. O, leci. Jedna cząstka poleciała. Przez trzy minuty to ich tak zależnie od miejsca. Co jest? Co jest w okolicy? I there is one particle. Depending where we are, the space radiation may reach us. It's on my hand. It works quicker. One click data storage. We can show you what it looks like. And here is the sensor. Jak widać, tu jeszcze mam jeden czujnik, to akurat firma One more sensor by Pascal Company. It's a Wi-Fi connected, full software included for data analysis. Bardzo dobre narzędzie, oczywiście. A very good tool. Do tego telefonu, do każdego telefonu oprogramowanego. It goes with any telephone that is free of charge once you buy it. Ale to oprogramowanie jest naprawdę dobre. It's really good. Możliwości są, tylko tylko możemy pojechać do A. No i w tym momencie jakby pomału sobie tu dochodzimy do końca, bo mamy tutaj taki ładny, ładny, ładny już pilot. Jeszcze coś pokażę. Nie, to jeszcze nie. We are nearing the end of the presentation. I'm going to show you one more thing. To tylko tak, na slajdzie widać taki wyróżniony tekst pod tytułem koniec wymówek. No more excuses is the underscore text in the slide. Ale do którego slajdu, przepraszam. Nie trzeba, już poradzimy sobie. Co, wyszłaś? No cofnij. Dobrze, to już przeskoczymy. Czyli krótko mówiąc, to jest taki nasz apel do, do nauczycieli. This is our request to the teachers. No more excuses. Nobody is going to say that there is no workshop. It's enough to bring in the telephones. They've got a number of sensors on them. And there's a group of exper experiments that you can run cost-free. It's good to have experiments. We harness technology. Live world. It's not a black box. Like, you know, press something and there's a result and you have to give an extra story. Science on Stage celebrates 20th anniversary and a 100th anniversary of the Polish Physical Society. Let me toast 
for PTF and Science on Stage. I've got a beautiful cup. Let me pour. Oh, oopsie daisy. What is this all about? Co to za historia? Otóż, jak jestem, uwielbiamy Grecję. We love Greece. Whenever I'm in Greece, I try to find traces of Hippocrates, philosophers, Thales of Milet. It's Asia Minor, it is, without any traces. I was visiting Samos, and this is from Samos, where Pythagoras was born, at the break of 6th and 5th century, before Christ. I came home, came home with this cup and I thought to myself, how has it been made? Does it have to be this way? And I devised for doing it yourself. A cup. This is a cross section of the cup. That's the way it looks. Jak zrobić i zachęcam każdego z Państwa. So all of you ja pokazywałam to na festiwalu. It. It's a siphon. Teraz jak byliśmy I showed it at the festival in Kaszkais. I e, wszyscy chcieli dostać ode mnie składniki tego. Everybody czegoś. wanted to have ingredients of this and I said you don't have to. Specjalnie. You don't have to make extra pójść. endeavors. Teraz przepraszam bardzo że mówię o plastiku. Sorry Ale on będzie for speaking about plastic. Wielo, tylko będzie wielokrotnego it will be reusable w domu, once uh, albo w klasie, you make it at home. Czego potrzebujemy? What do we need? Potrzebujemy takich um, piknikowych um, kieliszków. We need Ten picnic glasses. Ma <coughs> denko, it has got the bottom. Czarkę, and the cup that have been sealed off. What are we supposed to do? We need to cut off the cup to make a hole in it. And make a hole in the bottom. Wszystko to są grosze, bo te it kieliszki kupuje się pennies. za kilka złotych, a ich tam jest 20 chyba opakowanych. You buy 20 plus cups in one package for just a few grosze. You need two more things. Pipeta plastikowa, ta już jest odcięta. Pipeta plastikowa. Plastic One pipette that grosze. has been cut Nie off. Just a few pennies. I probówka. And the plastic probe, we need to cut off a test tube. We cut it shorter and create a hole in it. And then tę naszą pipetę wciskamy. Ona już wystarczająco bez kleju. We push it downwards. No glue required to make it tight. Nie wylewa się. No water is poured Jeżeli out. Teraz... Jeżeli teraz nałożymy if we put this test tube with a hole on, we don't have to glue it. I dismantled it because I didn't have uh, the virgin ones of the Kashkais. So this unsealed siphon, does it work? Nieuszczelniony, jeżeli chodzi o 
tę probówkę. Speaking about this jest test tube. Uczelniony z powodu pipety. The pipette sees it. It's made of soft plastic. It nicely slides in. Czy jak będę chciała za dużo wypić? If I want to drink too much. To mi się uda, czy się nie uda. Can I make it or can I not make it? Na następny zjazd. For the next Także bardzo zachęcam wszystkich. Convention. We can keep it. Let's enjoy this centenary. Sprzedałam pomysł. I gave you the idea. Buy the idea in. Why did you sell it? Because you had an interpretation. To show that the 21st century and ancient times come together. Yes, I started with the ancient times and I finished with plastics. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And enjoy successes in the 21st century physics teaching. Thank you very much for the inspirations. Yes, you can see there are a lot of possibilities at fingertips. Mr. President, may I give you a gift? Oh, thank you. I'll use it. 21st century, we have wonderful things to use. You have resilience to do with pupils. There are two questions in the internet, the first of which the use of sensors. What's your opinion about wireless sensors and multi-sensors? I believe that you have answered in the course of presentation, like the park assistance sensors. Nothing to add. We are for, but Using this technology, you need to use it for live experiments. The multi-sensor, pupils know what Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are. So be the cable transmission, whatever, there is a wide selection. But I wouldn't risk my life for that. You need to be open for old and the new. Another Drabinska asked the question about project method. Do you think it has got the advantage to other methods of training? What's your opinion on this? Me, being a practitioner, bardzo dobrze dawać możliwość realizacji It's nice to give possibility to realize projects but it cannot replace a regular lesson właśnie przedstawienie przez grupę wyników projektu The group may present results and if it was a concrete material from the lesson jest doskonałym uzupełnieniem It's a nice supplement nieprzecenioną and invaluable, Ohm's law, for example. Quite a tricky one. Organizational questions. Pre-high school times is now over. Methodology of the ministry, we need to support it. That was not ideal. <coughs> when I was at the German school, I had one day for running projects. There were different projects, dancing classes, physics or anything you want. They were ready organization-wise. The school, the pupils, supervisors, lots of work for us. I was listening to Professor Navrocik's lecture, 1928, they had similar problems. So 
do not wait off so that at the next assembly we can boast good results. Thank you. It's not the end, Professor. And time for a bazaar. The poster session, if we can call it, with the introduction of Polish participation in physics and stage science on stage with short films. A potem plakaty, które nauczyciele polscy and przedstawiali na the posters Polish Dalej, teachers were presenting. And the didactic bazaar is the presentation of experiments and projects presentation from our representatives' realizations at Science on Stage. <coughs> One hour and 32 minutes, and then the wrap-up of the session in this room. Thank you very much, and enter the virtual world, where we can learn about the bazaar and the posters. Thank you very much. Transparent uh, bottle, something that you have drunk during the break. And a piece of paper is what we need. We form a bowl. We place the paper bowl in the neck of the bottle and we ask the student to blow the piece of paper into the bottle. It jumps out of the bottle. Let's try again. So let's repeat this experiment. This experiment that students, pupils can explain perfectly. A balloon with ears. We need a balloon and two glasses with water. Remember that since uh, it is hot, you need to protect your hands. You attach the glasses to the sides of the balloon and in a moment you will pour the balloon over with cold water. You need to press the glasses strongly against the balloon. Remember to keep on pouring the water over the balloon. Remember to protect your hands because the glasses may still remain hot. A few hours later, the glasses are strongly attached, attached to the balloon. But we can see that they suck the balloon in. Some time ago, one of my students called it a balloon with ears. Mm -hmm. 
From the previous experiment, some water is left. We don't want to waste it. You can use it to water some plants, but you can equally well perform another experiment. We need a big bottle full of water. We also need a piece of straw, drinking straw. You cut it so that you get two sections of the same length and you secure them with plasticine to plug them so that no air can get inside. You have to put it in the bottle. You can see it floating. But if you turn the bottle upside down, it will still remain on the surface or on the top. But the plasticine will always stay at the bottom of this floating element. However, you can make this element dive. It's enough to squeeze the bottle a little bit. If you squeeze the bottle, it will dive. You can also try to keep the position of the floating element in a stable position. I really do recommend performing this experiment. It teaches you patience because you have to you have to know how much you should squeeze the bottle and remember that the bottle needs to be filled with water. A piece of straw is left from the previous experiment. Apart from a straw, we need a solution, half a glass, three droplets of washing liquid and half a tablespoon of powdered sugar. Mix it, but try to avoid its, its foaming. You apply some solution onto the worktop then you place the straw in the glass and you can blow the air to form bubbles. You can make a bubble in a bubble, you can arrange them side to side, you can expand them, make them larger. But you need to remember to place the straw in the solution every time you want to blow some air into the straw. It is great fun both for toddlers, for small children and for school pupils. Then the only problem is that you need to wash the worktop thoroughly because it's sticky because of uh, the powdered sugar residues, icing sugar residues. merry-go-round experiment. We are going to immerse into the amazing world of physics. We need a model of a merry-go-round. You can make it yourself. We need a rotor and an owing to the automatic rotor we are able to adjust the speed and see exactly what is happening. The screen displays RPM. Let's see the forces which 
influence the merry-go-round. Black is the force of gravity. Blue is the tension of the rope. Once you add them, you get the consequential force. We have two forces which affect our ponies. We are going to focus on centripetal force. We ask a question, why is the rope on which the seat is suspended deviates from the vertical line or what is the angle between, uh, between the post and the rope? When the merry-go-round is stable, it is not moving, the seats do not change their position, but after a while they do. Initially, the deviation from the vertical line is minor, but as the RPM increases, their uh, deviation is more, and they can even reach a horizontal position. That's the end of our experiment, so time to conclude. The higher RPM the bigger the alpha angle, which is uh, the angle between the post and the rope on which the seats are hanging. Standing wave on a glass plate. A wave, standing wave, is formed as a result of interference. Here you can find the information about the necessary software or programs and the activities necessary to carry out the experiment. You can also identify the frequency. The frequency was estimated to fall within the range possible to observe the influence of the changes on the change of amplitude.
This film was prepared by the students of the lower secondary school in Poznan. The curious Emily sets off on a journey towards searching Higgs boson. What are you doing? I'm playing Cernland. I also want to play it. You can't. Why? Because you don't know what CERN is. And who knows? I know. And our mom does. Hello? Mom, can you tell me what CERN is? I can't talk to you now. I'm just starting my lesson. The topic of today's lesson is CERN and elementary particles. I would like to tell you that the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences granted Peter Higgs and Vitus Englert for discovering the mechanism which explains how elementary particles get their mass, and they were awarded the Nobel Prize. Where is CERN? In Switzerland, near Geneva. How can you get there? By train, by plane. Come on, we'll show you. Look, look where it is. It is located near the border between, Fran between France and Switzerland. I'd really like to go there. Welcome to CERN, the European Nuclear Research Center, the biggest elementary particles lab in the world. This is a fascinating place. You are going to meet many interesting people here and see the places where wonderful theories were born. And this is going to be an exciting trip to this exciting, gripping place. CERN was set up by the people who wanted to integrate scientific milieus. An international organization was created. People from different countries were invited. There are 20 member states. They need to pay the budget in. This is the money that supports CERN. Well invested money. One Swiss franc invested brings about three francs in business. 
Innovations. Yeah, this is creation of new technologies. And the technologies are made available to other research centers, laboratories, and institutions that bring them into industrial use so that people all around the world can use it. Who works here? You can meet scientists, physicists, engineers from all over the world. There are about 12,000 people working in CERN that are of different nationalities with 200 posts. What are they working on? They research particles, matter composed is of, little things that build everything up that impacts on one another. Why do they test them? In order to understand the world better, the world we are in. Are there only geniuses working in CERN? All people working here need to carry out the tasks they have been bestowed with. One's theory of uh, Nice. Theory physicists would be nothing if they didn't get the support uh, of experiment to prove it. Appliances are required. Engineers, ICT, mechanics and others are required. Those not related to experiments are also very important, like office clerks, and restaurant people, they need to feed 12,000 people working here. Sun restaurants, magic place, all people are brought together here. At a restaurant table, you can eat dinner and discuss an interesting theory. Some CERN discoveries are rooted here. A student sits next to a Nobel Prize winner. They say, enjoy, and they eat lunch together. It brings people together, wonderful thing. How do you test particles? Specialized accelerators, colliders, and detectors are used for the purpose. CERN has got the world's biggest accelerator complex, RHC the great collision machine. What does the accelerator do? It accelerates up to specific energies. The collider hits them and the detector records the results. LHC is not only uh, the accelerator, but also a collider. So they accelerate in two different directions. <coughs> they are accelerated on the same track. Two protons uh, beams are directed against one another and collided. Four places are prepared for that. Proton beam is compressed to a very small fraction they collide. There are huge detectors. You can say that these are big photo cameras that register the results. million times higher temperature than the uh, nucleus of the sun. Lots of small particles are created. They live short and fall into smaller particles just after collision.
There are four detectors in the LC, Atlas, Iris, HC and CMS. Let's visit two of them. First, let's start with the Atlas experiment. It's huge. It's big and pretty heavy. We need to create big detectors to see the small particles. The particles, as this is a result of proton collisions, have great energies. They move really fast. The higher the speed, um, the greater the curve of its course. By analyzing the course, we'll know what was the momentum and the charge. We cannot do it without magnetic fields. For it to be huge, we need to have a huge magnet or magnet systems. The four detectors have such great dimensions. Let's see other detector. We are CMS detector hall. CMS detectors are built one on the top of the other, layered. Each of them registers different particles. Where is the detector? 100 meters below the ground. I'd like to see this collider. Not everybody can enter LHC. In order to enter there, there is a special safety system. Once you pin in the code that defines the employee, we need to stand on the scales before the entry point, the gantry. Is this the person associated with the code? It's not the end. Our identity needs to be confirmed by the scanner. Of our retina, LHC are blue tubes. These are the blue ones that are huge magnets for the protons to run around in LHC. Long blue pipes do it, dipole magnets, quadrupole magnets. Magnets are very important. Everything happens. We've got a special hall that tests the magnets because the magnets that operate with LAT need to be perfect. You might wonder, Emilka, who checks whether everything's okay in the experiment. CERN control center is where the people do it. Four islands of computers, responsible for one of the four experiments. There is about 10 people working here. Based on the data readout from a computer, people check whether the experiments go along the plan. So did they see the Higgs boson on the computers? Independent experiments registered it. Atlas and CMS. Almost at the same time, they announced that the particle was observed. It might have been Higgs boson. Both experiments quoted almost identical mass of the particle. What's so special about this particle? 
What's special is that it explains why the elementary particles have a mass. Why the masses are not equal. Why an electron is light. A proton is much heavier. This is Peter Higgs and Frances Sinclair developed a theory that provides the answer to the questions. Does that mean that we know everything about our world? Still, we know for little, but there are many interesting things that inquisitive children like you, Emilka, might learn. You will discover further secrets of the world. What are you doing, Emilka? I'm drawing the collision of protons. I know what CERN is, although little do I understand of this.
how atmospheric pressure works. Curie engine.
But if Phoenix is on the Savage, we are going to present that light generated sound. For the first time, it was Pavel Kabbalah to prepare it at our school in 2012. The experiment requires red laser, 635 nanometers wavelengths, 3 MV, semiconductor diode, loudspeaker, an amplifier, cones and bicycle wheel. Photodiode is connected uh, with, uh, with the circuit and photodiode emits the light. Additionally, this is coupled with an amplifier in order for the impulse to be audible once generated. We can hear the sound signal in the form of a click. This is the disturbance signal because photodiode is connected the way that there is no electricity in the circuit. Therefore, the resistance is pretty high, and there is the laser beam directed at the diode. Once it is covered, that is broken, there is a drastic change, and in the amplifier setting, the break in the light projection is registered as an impulse. That is something disturbing the circuit. The faster we do it, like a comb that is used or the uh, spokes of the wheel that revolves with different speed, the higher is the sound level. The curves are the result of the phenomenon which involve injection of electrons into specific parts of the screen. The musical theme was composed especially for the purpose of this project.
Magnetic and electric interactions. Magnetohydrodynamic effect. Materials. Salt. Water. Semolina. Ferrite magnet in the form of a circle, aluminium foil, a vessel with the diameter similar to the diameter of the magnet and the source of direct current. This is the arrangement of the 
test rig. This is the water liquid of sodium chloride, which moves inside the vessel in both directions simultaneously. Here comes the explanation that the solution contains positively charged sodium ions and negatively charged chlorine ions, which are both placed in the electric and magnetic fields. Moving towards the direction of the electrodes, we receive such an effect. And here is the list of the materials for another experiment. We need a, a copper coil, a, a copper wire coil, um, a battery and magnets. We attach the magnets to the battery with the same poles. We create the so-called magnetic train because the battery with the magnets moves inside the coil or it is pushed out of it because the magnets touch the the coil the electric current is flowing through the coil the train moves forward or to the right in the drawing in this case the battery is pushed out of the coil when there are different poles attaching the train does not move because the forces are in balance. Magnetic vehicle, aluminium foil, batteries and magnets. They can have uh, a form of pills or rings with different diameters. We attach the magnets to the battery so that they are directed with any, any poles, the same poles, outwards. When we attach magnets of different, with different diameters, the vehicle moves around in a circle, along a circular track. The explanation, if electric current is uh, flowing through the foil to the right, then the electrodynamic force is uh, oriented beyond the piece of paper. And uh, here we have the magnetic piston engine. We need thin copper wire, a syringe, magnets and the source of direct current. This is the arrangement
the explanation. When the magnet inside the syringe uh, is um, approached to the read relay, the electric circuit closes. The coil produces its own magnetic field, which attracts the magnet, namely our engine piston. But when we place the magnet away from the read relay, the electric circuit is broken. Then the magnet drops. The electric current closes and the cycle is repeated. The speed depends on the syringe inclination angle. Electronic electroscope. We need a 9 volt battery, uh, battery clamps, a red light emitting diode, a piece of wire, um, resistor, field transistor, and some materials which can be electricized. This is the arrangement of the test rig. Such an electroscope is able to record one volt voltage. When the system is connected to the battery, the diode is emitting light. We are brushing our, we're combing our hair and the comb is electricized, is charged negatively. Once we approach it the, to the diode, it, the, the, it stops lighting. You can also charge the balloon. We approach it to the electroscope. The light emitting diode, diode stops lighting. We approach some uh, a piece of the tape. Now you should stand on a piece of foil and you rub your feet holding the electroscope. Jump. The light emitting diode will no longer emit light, but then it will be lit again. A similar effect can be obtained while walking on a carpet. We deal with static electricity every day. References Good morning, dear students. Please take your seats. We are going to talk about sample machines. Oh no, not again. She's going to talk about the important things again.
We have known such machines since ancient times. Let's take the, the example of ancient Egypt. Uh, I'm sorry, this is the physics. Uh, this is physics, not history. Let me continue, and you will understand. But this is the 21st century, and you want to talk about simple machines. You want to talk about state-of-the-art technology and not about the old things. You are right. Let's let's get out. We. But, but guys, don't you want to listen? No, 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 no. We want, we need to leave quietly so that the headmaster cannot hear. Let's let's visit the shopping mall. We'll find something more modern than the old things. Hmm, but the doors are closed. I can't push push it. I can't press the handle. Hmm, what's going on? What have you expected? You don't want to learn about simple machines. Who are you? I'm a simple machine. I'm a door handle. You use my services so many times a day and you don't want to learn more about me. We don't care. We'll soon have automatic doors. OK, so we'll jump out of the window. We don't need to use a handle. OK, let's take the bicycles. Hmm. Mine's not working. Hmm. Mine's not working either. My dear students, a bicycle pedal is uh, my family, just like the different kinds of knobs or turning wheels. Perhaps this is a good idea to come back to this lesson. Oh, no. We'll, we'll take a walk. Please take a look. Shopping mall, automatic door, finally, the 21st century. OK, so uh, let's use the... Let's take the uh, let's use the escalator. Oh, you will not use me. I uh, one of the simple machines, but you don't want to use uh, inclined plane in the 21st century. Yeah, both me and my immobilized cousins are inclined planes. Hmm, we'll take a lift. Look, our photos and an inscription. Yes, there is an inscription. Ban on entering the lift for these two gentlemen. I'm a simple machine, a block which pulls all the ropes in the lift. If you don't like simple machines, stay away from the lift. My cousins from the mountains uh, and from uh, the lake area will also not let you in because they are responsible for operating pulleys. Well, it's quite hot in here. I need to drink something, but I'm not able to open the bottle. Wait, wait, I do have something. Hmm, I can't open mine either. No, you will not be able to open the bottle because I'm a kind of screw. No, you're a cup, yeah, but I'm a kind of a screw, a simple machine. But I have heard you don't want to get along with us. Look what happened to my watch. The All the screws fell apart. Are you joking? No screwdriver will work for you because uh, sc all screws will leave your home immediately. You will not be able to open any jar. OK, let's go to McDonald's. We will we'll, uh, drink something from a dispenser. OK, but I do have some vouchers, some coupons. Uh, let's use the scissors to cut them out. Hmm. My elbows do not bend. 
Hmm, being stupid is painful. Oh, the scissors are talking to us. Are you a straight, a simple machine? I'm a lever. My family contains many levers. There is a wheelbarrow, scales, and many others. But why aren't my arms bending? Because it's also a lever, but we are not vindictive and will let you go. But don't uh, even uh, think about visiting a playground because one of my cousins who is there is also very stubborn. Hmm. Okay, so what shall we do now? We can use a knife. No, you won't use a knife. I am a kind of machine as well. You must be a very simple machine. I'm an example of a wedge. An ex is my cousin. We have lots of uh, cousins that you call nails. However, they also use the assistance of our fragile cousins, namely the needles. Okay, so come back to school because perhaps there is still some chance for you. If you come back to school, perhaps we'll all forget what has happened here today. Boys, you managed to make it towards the end of the lesson, so it's time to summarize and to enumerate simple machines that you have heard of, really. We have levers, inclined plane, pulley, screw, blog. Great, well done. And now I'm going to summarize our knowledge by singing a song. The beloved ones, let's give our teachers a chance. Let's not negate upfront what 
whatever it is that they are going to teach us. Um, yeah. Pani Herona jest przykładem jednego z pierwszych This bardzo powstających is... silników ciepłych. Dzisiaj można budować jej wierne One of the 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 engines. We can build a simplified version of straws. Three of them. A green one that is shorter but the wider diameter and smaller diameter red and uh, yellow ones. If we blow it by putting into the mouth, you can see this effect. It lovely shows you how this simplified version of Heron's tube operates. This is also the play version. This is how you align the straws. Once you blow them, we've got an example of a more true-to-life replica of the turbine. You can create a number of copies or school versions of this construction. So we can reach out for a bigger dimension. This is composed of this element that you use for playing, like you put two ropes between two people and you slide it through. You provide air from an air pump or a blower, the hydraulic couplings that are inserted inside. There are shortened uh, versions uh, of the pipes. The ferules are mounted on this, and there is a bicycle counter additionally mounted. So, if your pupils want to compete to see who is more efficient in pumping the air inside, what I'm going to use is balloon air blower. And here is the turbine revolving. No steam, so this is a safe version, so there is no danger of burning skin and useful for didactic purposes.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Łukasz Starzonek and I represent Dr. Love Group. A number of experiments that we normally present as our experiments with the use of appliances we have constructed ourselves and we have devised them. You are in for meeting Dr. Labo's team, Bogumiła Szczepaniak, and Wojciech Rufus Gańcza. Hello and welcome. Good evening. I don't know what time you are watching this. We want to present a stroboscope. Movement can be observed with flashlights. The strop that was constructed with a physical club uh, students, we have the pleasure of chairing. It has been designed so that it can be used on stage because it had to be powerful enough. 400 LEDs, 3 watts each, 1.2 thousand watts, which is 12,000 watts of uh, reflector light. You can see the power, not full power, but what we can do about it. Let's see how the strobe operates when we have the room dark. Let's start with a fan. Voltec has switched off the stroboscope because we've got halogen reflectors, so this is continuous light. I'm going to speed up the one. So this is a continuous movement and we are going to align the stroboscope so that we can uh, stop, uh, see the stop. 53 hertz, I can say. This is the flash speed. The fan looks as if it had stopped and most of stroboscopes can do it. But the power of this one is large enough so that you can sit. You would see this even in a big room. But we came up with an idea that we have the frequency of the fan. We can have one flashes after another, like this one. So there is one flash after another. Can you can uh, can you show the fill in? This is a hundred percent fill in. So there is the same distance and flashes time wise, but this can be brought closer, and this movement is kind of visible. Two flashes setting. We can increase up to three flashes, one after another. Let's return to a single one, two, three, four. This is the echo one. One is stronger, another one is a weaker one. The third and the fourth. Can we synchronize them? We've made it. As you can see, we've got LED light emitting diodes, three colored ones plus white ones, so we can do something more. We can give colors to the movement. The main flash is red and every consecutive one is paler one, so you can see the faces of the movement. The movement faces not only can we see on the ventilator, on a fan, but it's most spectacular if we try to have a regular ball on a string in this light we are able to see the movement of this with an echo in different colors the first experiments that we were doing whatever is moving in front of a stroboscope you can see that there are more of these let me change the fill-in factor. Greater fill-in factor, 70%. In my opinion, looks more attractive. We have a number of full-color programs. Switch that on. 
we've got the same eco, but in blue, if you prefer these colors, we've got R, G, B colors to show how they mix. Another program, C, R, M, Y. So what you know from SMIC printers, three colors, not the basic ones, but the supplementary ones, RGB colors with white one, and further ones that make it possible to show how two colors mix. We've selected a number of examples, so that you can play with colors. I am behind the stroboscope and I'm looking through the fan onto the stroboscope. I wish you could see that. You can join for our presentations because I can see the blades covering specific diodes. It cannot be seen the camera. We can have a try with the lights on. Can we have the lights on? I try to lower the stroboscope power. Without cutting our fingers, you can see that it's revolving. You can see specific colors covered. We can change synchro of the fan. Let's try to put it on a halt. Pretty well imaging in the camera. We are missing you. Questions and reactions, therefore, you are more than welcome to join Dr. Labo presentations live whenever possible. Superconductivity of substances in low temperatures. Conductor seen on the screen. Light bulb is hovering in the air. Everybody knows this and very often presented. When we take a bigger ball, there'll be a stronger blower to be in place. I'm going to use this one that has been taken from a vacuum cleaner. And hovering is also possible, but it shows the scalability of the laws of physics. But the question arises, half the ball, will it be able to fly in the air? Let's check it. Half of the ball 
runs away. But if you have proper leverage, levering, there is a washer made of steel that you stick on the bottom of this half sphere. We have stable hovering. We can move further on. On the verges we can attach little wings. And we have the fan effect, fan result. revolving movement and this is a reference to wind energy. Not only such ones may hover by aerodynamics. Well, let's try to use the thing that you take with you when you go to a beach. less stable but still possible as you can see. This shows us different aspects of hovering, not only the simple ball but also a pen, an inflatable ball called a donut and many other things you can test at our classes. Glycerin, ferrum sulfate and rectified spirits. We use laboratory equipment. Preparation of the liquids. This is the liquid of the lowest density. Then we put the solution of spirits with glycerin. Ferrum sulfate water solution. And this is what our system of liquids look like. This is the course of the laser beam, the green laser beam. And now we can see the blue laser light and the blue laser beam.
This experiment shows red laser beam. This video was prepared by the Comprehensive Secondary School in Świnoujście. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Polish Physical Society, I would like to thank you for your participation in the 46th Exceptional Congress of the Polish Physicists organized on behalf of the centennial anniversary of the Polish Physical Society. Unfortunately, as we all know, all good things come to an end. This Congress presented the history, the presence, and the future of uh, physics in Poland. On day one, we heard uh, a lot about uh, the 100 years of history uh, of physics in Poland. Day two was devoted to the presence of uh, Polish physics. We had the opportunity to listen to a number of interesting lectures showing how Polish and global physics evolves. Big research international teams uh, play the increasingly important role and they deal with uh, challenges of physics such as Higgs bosons, gravitational waves, or or neutrinos. No single country is able to afford such research and hence the need to get together and to fund, to fund such research. And today, special session which clearly showed that we have excellent teachers in Poland. This is a very optimistic day, showing that the future of Polish physics is in, a good, is, is in good hands. When looking into the future in a perspective of a dozen of years, I think this is a bright future. I'm sure we'll be able to educate a new generation of exceptional physicists. This Congress was organized in a blended form. Unfortunately, the coronavirus pandemic contributed to a lot of logistic problems that had to be uh, solved impromptu. I would like to say that the Warsaw branch of the Polish Physical Society did an excellent job. I would like to thank the head of the organizing committee of the Congress, Andrzej Wysmołek. Save for his initiative and uh, determination, uh, the Congress could have not been organized or it could be organized in a different way. The organizing committee included a number of uh, exceptional organizers. I would like to say a few words about all of them. I owe my gratitude to Jerzy Garbarczyk, Richard Kutner, who was responsible for the finance. Maria Dobkowska, who was the organizer of today's session, she is with us. Thank you. Pani Katarzynie Drabowskiej, Katarzyna Drabowska, Anetie Drabińskiej, and Aneta Drabińska. Nie ma wątpliwości, że no doubt that, uh, the, that Krzysztof Petelczyc is the embodiment of hard work. 
he was able to combine substantial work, technical work, with the technical organization of the Congress. But for his involvement in the organization of the Congress, we would uh, either have a poorly organized uh, event or it wouldn't be organized at all. Moreover, I would like to thank other members of the organizing committee, Katarzyna Hałasińska Mazukowi, Jan Mostowski, Tomasz Pietrzak, Maciej Kolwas, Tadeusz Stacewicz, Jan Grabski, Piotr Rączka and Przemysław Duda. I would like to thank the whole organizing committee of the 46th exceptional Congress of the Polish Physical Society. We also owe our gratitude and expressions of thanks to our sponsors and uh, those who are responsible for the broadcast. Everything went perfectly well. There were some minor faults, like uh, the one today in the morning, as a result of very slow Wi-Fi transmission, but we managed to cope with it. Taking the opportunity, I would also like to mention that this year, uh, the, this year is the year of physics. The Senate of the Republic of Poland decided that 2020 would be the year of physics. On this occasion, on the 28th of October, we will we'll have the opening of the gallery of posters, and on the 30th of October, we'll have a conference devoted to the achievements of uh, physics in Poland. It is also associated with the 100th anniversary of the Polish Physical Society. Please feel invited to these uh, events, and the broadcast will be available on the website of the Senate. We must not forget that next year, we will organize uh, uh, the Congress of uh, Physicists. We do hope that the pandemic will uh, slow down. We do hope to see you in Bydgoszcz uh, towards the end of September 29th, 30th, September next year. I do hope it's not going to be another blended uh, Congress. Inviting you to participate in these events, I would like to thank you for your participation in this excellent uh, Congress, and let me announce that the 46th Exceptional Congress of the Polish Physical Society has closed. Thank you very much for your participation.